Hello everyone, it's McCall here. Welcome back Hello, to McCall. the episode two of Star Trek Nighthawk. Uh, episode title, Shackles. Where we, fall, where we seek to answer the question, what would Starfleet Intelligence do with an exploration cruiser? Let's find out with the captain's log. Captain's log, start at 82417.2. The USS Contiki has brought us out of slipstream to little fan a welcome differentiation compared to our shakedown crews. We now arrive in the Lasat Expanse, a sector of space for which there is very little available knowledge of. There are few Federation assets in this region of space, and the Night Hawk has been tasked with uncovering the mysteries that lie within this recently uncovered chapter of the Final Frontier. Among the little intelligence Starfleet has gathered, a power calling themselves the Vitars Imperium seems to have contacted Server's station a few weeks ago. It would be prudent of us to glean more information about this Imperium, their culture, and their motivations. Additionally, it would be sagacious to discover if there are any additional relationships the Imperium has with the additional nearby systems relative to our position and our fixed installation. All right. So we are going to start off uh, just as the captain has stated. Uh, you have just deposited yourself on the away a little ways away from the known borders of the Vitars Imperium uh, as director Chalmers says we don't know what's out here yet don't know who really so we sort of just dropped you guys off in a nearby stellar nursery hope there's no one going to actively shoot at you but see what's out there and uh, lieutenant commander Jax of the the commanding officer of the Khan Tiki um, doesn't say much. He just shrugs and says, pretty smooth ride, Captain. I wish you and your crew all the best. Well, thank you, Captain. And I hope you can take care of these asylum seekers well. Not to worry. It's not often we get a uh, prisoner. It's not often we get prisoners, uh, sorry, asylum seekers on this ship. They're actually a bit of a celebrity at the moment. They'll, take, they'll drain what they'll drain our small mess hall dry of alcoholic substances if we don't get back to Federation space soon. We'll be yeah, here for but... about a day if just uh, respooling the uh, quantum slipstream drive. If you need anything, just call. Sure, sure. So you're saying that you know the asylum seekers aren't the only one that gets to drink your synth hole, better yours than mine. He slurps. <laughs> Starfleet cooperation at its finest, if I say so myself. All right, well, send roll out. Okay. So, a uh, quick description of where you guys are. Um, the Zeta uh, Zero Two Quadrant. Um, you have been deposited near the south of it, whereas the Vitars Imperium's known borders are roughly 20 light years to the north of you. Uh, you have been deposited in a stellar nursery of about 20-ish stars, most of which are either class... Uh, and the classes escape me. They're either very young stars or they're very... They're brown dwarfs where fusion just hasn't taken over and most of... And the star sort of is just idling until it dies of lack of power really there's about four or five stars that could be of some use or some interest to survey and well well let's get these uh star systems on long range sensors and plot a course it's right. time to go explore okay. <clears throat> so we'll cut ourselves to the bridge this fine scryer vessel and the first role of the game would be for a sensors plus science of Commander Bashir. And I have no idea how to pronounce your last name, Commander. Good luck with that. <laughs> Most pink skins can't. <laughs> okay, we'll just call you Bashir. We'll just call you Okay, so we are going to do control and science. Indeed. Uh, let's set this for a difficulty of one. And the ship can assist with sensors plus science. Yeah, I got the ship up. Okay. 
Which one do you find, folks, unless they track Memento? Ooh. Well, we've already got three, as Bashir has done. Okay, we're already at four momentum. <laughs> uh, um, if one of you guys cares to track momentum, yeah, that would be appreciated. I'll take it. Okay. You have four momentum. Well done, everyone. Also, Commander Slashir, you're coming in really hot on your microphone. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, much of the systems that you're... Uh, thanks to the advanced sensors on here, um, you this is also a talent, so you automatically get one momentum that you can spend on an ask question, if you wish. Uh, one of the systems, um, not quite the closest one of interest to you, but... Uh, the second or third one out. It, it would be a uh, Class K uh, white star. So a star that is younger than our sun, but not by much. Um, it is... The, there is a massive sensor dampening field uh, taking place. That seems to be blocking out what you would suspect is almost a, a full planet. Is there evidence of, uh, like, warp signatures or nearby vessels or anything like that okay. coming to and from said planet? Uh, from this distance, it's difficult. Uh, do you wish to spend that one momentum gained on that question? Please. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, there is no active sensor or no active uh, signatures of spacefaring vessels coming to or from the system. Well, I mean, if the rest of the bridge crew doesn't want to object, I think it's worth a closer look. The first time, first thing we stop and look at the getting here, we can't take a good look at it. So, I mean, we're here to explore, right? Plotting a course, Captain. Do you want to go to the uh, active camouflage, sir? No, not necessary yet. Let's uh, cruise on in at a steady... You said it's in the next sector over? Uh, it's in this sector. It's just one of the near... It's not the closest nearby system, but one of the near... One of them. It'll be a... If you're traveling at warp 8.5, which is the maximum speed, it'll take you about an hour and a half to reach. If okay. you are t wish to take it a little more slowly and leisurely, well, time increases. Well, let's try to get there. Let's plot a course at warp 7. Okay. And I'll use a uh, you know, keep scans active. Very well. Warp seven. Okay. Also, continually relay our position every fifteen minutes to the USS Contiki, just so they can keep track of our position. Understood. Okay, so we are going. Uh, does anybody wish to do anything during this uh, couple hours of warp travel? No, just keep, uh, for me, keep track of if there's other vessels in the area or residual warp signatures or stuff like that. Okay. I don't I'm know if that's the con station, but... I'm just getting myself still acquainted with the um, engineering of the, the ship's guts and all that. All right. I I would actually like to go down to sick there okay. and meet with a doctor. So the captain is going to head down to the sick bay. And we have had a... A quick recasting of our medical personnel. Um, so I would like to introduce Lieutenant Commander Kinor. Uh So if you could just please describe your character real quick. Um, Kanor is a female Vulcan. Um, eventually I'll have her service record up. Um, and right now she's probably like studying um, medical records of everyone on the ship. At least that's what I would be doing if I was on a new ship. Uh, I assume she's relatively... Yeah, you're all new transfers on board this vessel. Okay. All right. Doors hiss open, and in walks the captain. Uh, Kenora stands up. Well, good afternoon, daughter. Sorry? Well, good afternoon. Oh. Uh, she looks over to you with her hands... Uh, behind her back and 
takes a few steps forward and nods and says, uh, good afternoon, Captain. Is there something I could... Well, you know, it would be prudent of me to get to know the personnel on my ship in greater detail, and I Although it's not necessarily my favorite place, it's probably best for me to get to know sickbay in the event that I I should require, or anybody on the ship should require your services. Uh, indeed. That's all she says. She just nods and says, indeed. So, out of character question, mm-hmm. everybody on this ship, um, to the order of the DM, is in some way affiliated with Starfleet Intelligence. Correct. Either they've just been re- recently poached, or they've been serving Starfleet Intelligence for a while. And uh, how about our good old doctor here? What would I know about? I know you don't have your service records available right now, but I guess that's a player question. How long have you actually been serving uh, with Starfleet Intelligence? Uh, She actually just started this year. Okay, Uh, then. She was trained at, like, one of those secret facilities, and then um, I'll have to either remember or go through my notes later, but there was some kind of event that happened that the Starfleet Intelligence thought she was she did well, really well at. I think it was diplomacy or something, so they basically recruited her for um, that reason, but she's always been a medical person, so they put her on an intelligence ship as a doctor. I see. Alright, then. Well, Doctor... As you're obviously well aware that, you know, Starfleet Intelligence has tasked us explore this region in greater detail but there may come a time where i may have to give you necessarily some unscrupulous orders that may seem unusual but i expect you to follow them quickly and promptly to the best of your ability she says of course captain that being said tell me a little bit about your interests uh when you say this she you can see her eyes dart back and forth like from side to side as she's uh, look uh, glances around for a brief moment that's barely even noticeable and then she clears her throat and she says my interest sir yeah, i mean i i mean i know vulcans may not necessarily well at least they to the outside world think that they don't necessarily have emotions but i know you still have preferences and likes and dislikes at least within this sick bit I mean, is there anything that you want that you want that's imp- that you feel like could be improved? Is there anything that you know you occupy your time with when you're not here? Um, she glances down for a second and then looks back up and she says, um, "Captain, I do have interests. However, I don't see how they're pertinent to our current situation in, in this expansion." pertinent because I'm asking the question doctor she nods and says I I apologize captain I'm a private person Um, my interests are things uh, like art and music and uh, she once again looks around briefly but she keeps her composure mostly Um, and then she says "Uh, I like to read Um, i often spend most of uh, my most of my time alone when I'm not working I, I see I see I mean personally for me I don't necessarily catch up on reading unless it's all these you know intelligence dossiers I'm lucky for me that's not necessarily the type of person that I turned out to be but yeah, yeah I'm empathic so still a very perceptive and we're going to be in this region of space for quite a bit of time. So if you choose to keep to yours, I could respect that. But at the same time, now that this is a big ship, and you're not alone. Sorry, what was that last part? I said, now that this is a big ship and that you're not alone. He nods and says, thank you, Captain. I'll keep that in mind. All right, then. Well, if there's nothing else that you feel like that's in order that you need to bring to my attention... I'll just continue my rounds. All right, Captain. All right. Where? Any place in particular you'd like to go next? Uh, I'll go stroll through engineering. Okay. Down to engineering. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Thashras, I believe that's pronounced. What would the captain find you doing when he wanders into engineering? 
I have my hands uh, stuck inside the uh, one of the engineering panels with um, all my hands and knees. I turn around and say, oh, Captain, perfect timing. Now, don't you, uh, yeah, you see on your, over your neck by your uh, right foot over there? Why don't you throw me one of the uh, hyperspanners? I, I, I just yeah, need it really quick. Uh, this hyperspanner? And I'm just pointing to this toolbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just, just toss, toss it over here. Toss it over here. I got it. Well, I don't toss over the hyperspanner itself. Instead, I toss over the entire collection of tools to him. Oh, God. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. Oh well, well, well. Thanks for tossing all all five of them. I I, I guess I that helped. Uh, You're welcome. Say. All, right, all right, give me one sec here. Uh, and just stick one in my mouth. Do another one. It takes me like ten seconds or so. All right, got that all fixed up to my to how I like it. What can I do you for, Captain? How's my engine? You cut off there. Oh, how is my engine? Oh, how's your engine? Oh, d doing perfect. I mean, it was already uh, ninety nine percent um, optimized, so I just tweaked it a little bit more just to give that you know extra one percent. Lieutenant Cassatt speaks up. I'm uncertain how stringing wires along the external bulkhead counts as improving efficiency. The trick is that those wires are red. Lieutenant Thus, Cassatt. it'll go faster. He raises an eyebrow. Captain, I feel, or Commander, I feel that's breaching uh, meta. However, if that is your choice, this is your engineering department. You dump me now, but you'll see. Next time we, we get in a spot of danger, you're going to appreciate that 1% increase. Well, I'm always one for optimization. Just make sure it doesn't become excessive and you lose sight of our goal. Excessive meat? <laughs> I've never been known to be excessive. <laughs> mm. Well, I, of that, I have no doubt. Start shifting my eyes. Uh. Well, you know, just for fun, oh, let's, uh, let me read this guy right now. Can I tell what he's feeling? Um... Is it... Or is this going to be a Troy situation where I don't even need to be an empath? <laughs> um, that's up to the player in this instance. I, he doesn't strike me as a chap who is actively resisting, but... Yeah, no, I think it's pretty pretty obvious. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, he's, he's, he's a pretty passionate guy, so uh, once in a while things might get slightly out of hand. Well, more so what I'm looking for is, is it passion that I'm sensing right now, or is it something that you're preoccupied about because they're nervous. Not necessarily that you want to keep something from me, but there's something else that you just want to take care of ahead of time. Oh, more just, just uh, being nervous and saying like, oh, me, me be over excessive or stuff? Oh, that that never never happened. No. All right then. So. Well, well, in any case, if you feel like you and your staff are up to task, if there's anything that you necessarily need, by all means, uh, keep me informed and keep me in the loop. Radio, Captain. All right, then. Well, in that case, I'll just leave engineering. All right. And I will return to the bridge, but I will go into my ready room. Okay. Conference room. Uh, nope. Con we're looking for ready room, not the conference room. Well, I mean, we don't have to necessarily put me on this map. I just wanted to say that once I once once I arrive in there, before we actually arrive at our court, I want to begin entering uh, my personal observations about the crew in, in my personal log. Very well. The captain has decided to adjourn. Uh, does anybody else have any scenes that they would like to execute? Nope. Okay. So. Uh, I'm probably going to um, remember last time he was playing a prank on me with the uh, force field walls. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna start um, flickering and changing the, the colors, color of lights in in his um, in his area. Okay. Um, uh, Commander Liam Helsing is dutifully at his post when all of a sudden his L cars display starts flickering random colors and a sort of disco ball like effect happens on the uh, lights above his station. 
the wallpaper changes on on the screen. Yeah. Yep. Some catchy music starts playing out of the the panel. Um. Engineering, Commander Helsing. Yes, sir. What can I do? Um. For? Yes, sir. I'm getting some weird feedback up here on my uh, console. Disco ball, lights flickering. Are you sure? Maybe you need to get your uh, your vision checked. I remember last time you, you had problems seeing some of those um, those force fields that popped up. Oh, no, no. I saw those clear. No, clear you did? Day. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. No. Just thought you could lighten up the mood a bit, you know. Thought, thought you looked a little bit bored there. Uh, I appreciate it. It, it oh. did wake me up. All right. Yeah. Make, making sure you're not sleeping on the job there. Well, thank you much. Is can my board return back to normal, please? If 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 you insist, let me change it back. Thank you much, sir. Even though you're Engineering both the out. same rank. Uh, no, nope, that's right. He is. That's just the impression I give. Um, <laughs> <can> actually, refers <laughs> to me. Uh, the air like does quietly hope for a slightly more music. Makes this place a little bit more interesting to sit there. Uh, I mean, I can't turn it on anywhere where the ca captain would hear. I can get in trouble for that. He's in his ready room. That's true. I mean, if you if you send me a request, I could probably do it. Just some light jazz, just in the speakers in my station would be all right. I send you some nice, um, old-fashioned. Uh, this artist from um, from old Earth times uh, called this um, Kenneth G. Ah, no wonder why the old Earthlings were barbarians. They had to listen to this drivel. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Ah, everyone's a critic. <laughs> uh, as if on cue, uh, Lieutenant Alak, you have reached your coordinates and are dropped out at the edge of the system. I will summon the captain. That's not true. I will request the captain his presence back on the bridge. Well, alright then. Well, I'll finish up my log and go ahead and encrypt that and return to the bridge. What's, what's coming up on screen? So, I'll just move the captain back in his chair. Okay, so quick scan of the system uh, reveals uh, a grand total of six planets and one distortion field. Uh, there is uh, the planet, or the sun is a class F white star. And then the planets are in order of closest to farthest from the star is a class S, so one a gas giant roughly the size of Saturn. Um, right up against the star. Uh, astronomers refer to them as hot Jupiters. Uh, then there is a class B, uh, a planet similar to Mercury. Uh, class A, um, a geovolcanic type of world. Uh, class L, which is a barely habitable class M planet. Uh, the distortion field, a class N planet, which is a planet similar to Venus. And then a class G... Uh, class C planet, which is similar to Pluto. So, can we get a better look at that class L planet on sensors, please? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, the class L planet appears to be um, uninhabited and fairly... Um, the atmosphere is a barely breathable combination of oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, very thin, not a lot of vegetation, uh, sort of very rough mountainous terrain, for the most part. Not a lot of water. Uh, any signs or possible signs of life, previous or otherwise? That would be a sensor's science, please. Uh, Y'all should know the trick by now. Uh, this will be a difficulty too, since you guys are at s still at extreme range on the system. So, and 
the ship can assist with the sensor science. Well, I got the ship out. And that one. Ouch. Ooh. So the something about the scanning, um, possibly the disruption or pro. Ah, sorry. Possibly the disruption field between you and the planet is causing every everything to go slightly haywire. Um, you hear a faint explosion. Well, it's not faint. Uh, you hear a small sparking <laughs> as uh, Commander Bashir's console shows a lot of random pixels, spurts, flutters, and quickly resumes itself. Um, the how disco ball effect? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, so... Well, it would be very kind if uh, that would just want to come right by me with a ship that didn't have tech issues every five seconds. Uh, well, in any case, um, if so, I, it's still prudent of us to necessarily take a closer look, and if it's already doing that to our console, might as well t take us in, but keep us on the edge of this distortion field. And I still want to be able to identify exactly what type of signal this field is giving up. Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Taking us in. Okay. So you slow, uh, you slowly edge your way past the um, outer, the outer ring, the outer planet orbits. And as you cr get by the, cl by the sixth, or the fifth planet that you're able to scan, the class N. And you reach the edge of the, the disruption field. And at this point, uh, even though your sensors can't penetrate it all that well, you are able to get a better look at it. Um, which planet, which background are you? You are here. So this is the planet that is between the class L and the class N. And even even with the disruption field in place, your your sensors are reading it as class M. And there is one moon in the orbit, as well as a fairly sizable debris ring around the planet. Well, this is new. Well, all of this is new, but this in particular is <laughs> Thoughts? I asked it, I asked the bridge crew generally. Uh, traces of ships in the area, uh, warp residues, that sort of thing. That will require a new sensor science, um, if you could please. And because of the complication that happened, it's now going to be a difficulty of two, where it would have been a one. Sensor science? Or, sorry. My apologies, that would be a control plus science for that, or sensors science for the ship. My bad. Oh yeah, I'll, uh, I'm going to use uh, the small craft. Okay. Focus. Oh, I guess he got it, okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Nice, so that would be one extra momentum. And you also get the momentum to ask a question thanks to your sensors. So, there are several things of note here. Uh, the first is that the um, what is currently surrounding the planet is a debris ring of old satellites and ship uh, ship fragments. Um, you're a you're able to count what you believe to be at least twenty ish different uh, ships in various dilapidated states. None of them are whole. Most of them show uh, weapons fire signatures. Uh, the planet itself, I have wrote this down, uh, its atmosphere is, despite it appearing to be a Class M planet, um, there are, the gas is high concentrations of methane, carbon monoxide, and fluorine gases. And the, the source of this disruption signal appears to be coming from an installation on the moon that is beaming it directly over the planet. 
So is this disruption signal? Um, well, actually, back up. My, my first question that I do want to ask, what exactly is the tech level of the ships that we could tell from this debris uh, would comparable to, you know, our, our Federation history and our own encounters with okay. both our own history and other species? Is that what you're spending the momentum on? I'd like if nobody else has any objectives. No, go for it. Go for it, yeah. Okay. So, no, no, uh, you keep that momentum. It was the momentum that you gained from your ship talent. Oh, if it's from the ship talent? Yeah. Okay. So you can keep that and spend it for more, more questions afterwards if you'd like. Sure. Um, so the ships, up, there are several different classes, most of which are unidentified by your, by the ship database. Uh, there are some that seem to bear the a composition matching the Avatar's cruiser that uh, visited Cerberus Station a couple weeks ago. Um, most of them are of lesser tech to you. Um, and the main problem is not... There is a couple pieces of Borg ship debris. Nothing large, like no you know, quarter section of a Borg cube. But you do detect um, the alloys typically, um, typically found in Borg construction. Okay. Um, in character question... Uh, it's one that I don't really think should cost a momentum because I should probably know this. Mm -hmm. With the first contact with the Batars Imperium and Cerberus Station, mm -hmm. uh, how exactly did that go over? Was that friendly, or was that, <laughs> did they appear hostile? Or... It was tense. Uh, tense. The first, the first contact wa scenario was that the uh, the Cerberus Station had found a derelict vessel. That vessel contained spores that eventually evolved into a species known as the Togalau. Uh, however, the Vitars did not like th or had a shoot first, ask questions later on these spores as they deemed it to be a biological weapon. Um, so it, they initially acted all hostile, but the captain talked it down and eventually the Togalau evolved into a sentient colony species. And the Vitars took the Togalau back to their infested worlds in an attempt to clean up the infestation. All right, I see. Well, I got another question that I want to ask, but I'll yield the floor to anybody else that wants to use this momentum for something else. Uh, anything currently moving in the debris fields, like salvage ships, okay. enemies lurking in disguise, that sort of thing? Uh, spend, and, if you wish to um, yeah, I guess. spend a momentum. If no one else has objections. Well, a uh, quick one also to add to that. You said one of those ships was a Taurus class that, vi that just visited the same type that visited Cerebus Station. How old or what's the most current ship out there age-wise? Uh, difficult to get oh. a full age with the without a good frame of reference. Um, mostly, uh, let's see, by a rough estimate, you believe that the oldest ship would be about 30-ish, maybe 25 years old. And to answer the debris c composition question is nothing is moving, but you are detecting muted power signatures that could p possibly be uh, deactive or hibernating weapon satellites. Hmm. Captain, I suspect there's an ambush waiting for us in that ring. I would be obliged to agree with you. In um, any case. Let's see. Oh, I for, should permission also to mention... take the specter out. Uh, sorry, there's one other piece of critical information I should have given you from the first thing. There is a very weak sent, uh, very weak communication signal coming from the moon. It's difficult to pick out from the uh, distortion itself. Well, that sounds like we should try to intercept it. It's not an uh, it's not an actual interception test because it's being broadcast wideband. It's using Romulan uh, carrier signals. Oh, well, this day just keeps getting more and more interesting. Does anyone speak Romulan? <laughs> the computer does. I do. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, our SGS caption also has xenolinguistics, so at least I believe I do. I do. Uh, Captain, you want to go to yellow alert because of those uh, power down um, weapon signatures? I believe that would be best. Take us to yellow yeah. alert. Yellow alert initiated. The mis the um, warning is played. It's a repeating message. My name, sorry, my name is Sumil. Once with the Romulan Imperial, once with once of the Romulus Romulan Imperium. This is a warning to all approaching ships. Do not approach the planet. If you need a planet is infested with former Borg could use assistance please and it repeats itself when hearing that the first time you see Commander Harrelsing kind of stiffen up did Alex. that message just tell us, tell us to stay away but also that they need help but well, they're on the moon, yes. or the communications came from the moon, and they're sure. surrounding the planet, the disruption field. Uh, makes more sense. So I say we investigate both. I am not necessarily prudent to completely split everybody up at once at, at this point in time. So I'm going to say that we either do one or the other. So I'm more prudent to actually investigate the moon. I mean, it's a less, you know, obviously less likely chance for possibly a cultural encounter in case there's actually life on this planet that we're unprepared for <laughs> and additionally obviously that's where the distortion field is coming from anyway so it's more it's, it makes more sense for that to be our first objective for us to investigate so in that case i'll say helm bring us within transporter range of this room take us there at one quarter impulse but do it slowly and I'm going to turn to my chief of security team and say, hey, it's time for us to get an away, an away team uh, assembled. So I'd like at least a few your, a few security officers. Aye, uh, sir. Okay. I like how the Nighthawk is slowly moving towards the moon. I like how you, <laughs> like you said, do it at one quarter impulse, but do it slowly. It's like, aye, aye. <laughs> Captain? <laughs> the devil's in the details. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so we are doing an away mission. So, who is going to go planet side? Or moon side in this instance? Uh, Alec puts up his hand. Ooh, pick me. Oh, oh, oh yes, here. Because we'll I mean, have two other security guys. All right. Uh, I mean... Mattaing for a little bit. We don't have a lot of supporting characters that we've studied yet, so we don't have a lot of other security officers that, or other crew men that we can actually take outside of the ones that you've so generously studied for us already. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, uh, taking my chief of security is number numero uno. Mm -hmm. um, also, taking an engineer to obviously uh, decode whatever other signals or technology that we find on this mood is prudent. Yes! <laughs> we need somebody that has the ability to analyze these sensor logs. So it would either be a Commander Bashir or anybody else. Did we actually get a, a sensor analysis supporting character up yet or no? Why, yes, indeed. Um, I started up a some... <laughs> I started up a data jockey character to live in the data analysis lab. A pair of binars known as one zero and one one. How kind of you. Well, um, unless my science officer is going to object extraordinarily so, I'd like to actually take the binars. That's fine. I can stay here in command. I feel like that's that's best. And even though I'm breaking the cardinal rule that the captain shouldn't go on the away missions, I am totally going on this away mission. <laughs> <laughs> so, I believe I've heard of four characters so far. So the captain, lieutenant commander... Oh, nope, we're up to five because of the chief engineer. That would be him. 
uh, Lieutenant Alak, uh, Shras, and the Binar. Um, and also, um, our doctor. Okay. And the doctor. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, as you approach the uh, lunar facility, uh, Lieutenant <coughs> Commander Liam Helsing does get a weapons lock notice. Um, however, a quick scan indicates that the weapons are fairly sub-powered. Uh, they don't pose much of a danger to a shielded Nighthawk. Alright then, but if we need to necessarily... Would, are we still outside of trans... Are we still within <laughs> transporter range, even if we drop the shields to transport onto the, to, to the planet, or will we have to take the shuttle? Is, is, is the dispersion field interfering with uh, uh, the your signature? No, the dispersion field it will not interfere with transporting to and from the moon. All right, then. Well, I have no other objections. Okay. Not here either. So we are all going to travel to the station. So this is what the station looks like on the outside. Had you taken the shuttlecraft, there would have been a shuttle pad here waiting for you. But instead, you are just going to beam right in like unwelcome guests. all to nope that's not how this works one of these days I'll get the hang of roll 20 I've only been doing this for a year there we go well I'm gonna ambush you while you're messing with the uh, roll 20 yes uh, before we actually transport in I would have obvious I would have assumed I would have reviewed you know the missions in greater detail while I was assembling the away team of course so could I be able to tell exactly what how old or what type of Romulan frequency this was sent on? Um, <laughs> roll me uh, insight plus science, please. And if you have anything in cryptography, xenolinguistics, or history, either or. Uh, can I convince you to make it a security roll? I suppose so. I can, I can assist you. I have cryptography as a, as a focus. Well, I also have senior linguistics, but you want to assist, that's fine. Okay. 2d20? Uh, 2d20 difficulty of 2. Alright then. And what would the assist be? Oh, good lord. Uh, the assist would be uh, either insight security or insight science. Let's see if we can... Well, you already have max momentum. Holy cow. Jeez. Okay. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so you're at max momentum, so six momentum, and you have three floating if you wish to ask questions after this. Otherwise, those are gone. Uh, so the communication protocols that are in use or that you're detecting are uh, fairly old by your standards. Um, they are roughly uh, 50 years old. Fifty. Yeah. All right then. Huh. Yeah, we trained on this code back at uh, the academy. Uh, oops, I apologize. It would be about forty years old. I just double checked my dates. But still, a fairly old code. Fairly old code. I don't think we scanned this facility for life forms. No, you did not. You just sort of beamed in. Yeah, we're Starfleet. Yeah, we're yeah. Starfleet. Well, I suppose this is the best time for you guys to get your tricorders out and start doing that. Well, you're not going to get too far when you hear a very startled, What the hell? Captain, there are life forms here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, that's a thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As a Romulan male quickly runs over from one of a uh, computer desk as six strangers just sort of beamed in. Well, <laughs> he looks to draw someone asked for help. Yeah. He looks to draw a weapon. 
Okay, sorry, seven characters, Beeman. I forget the binars are. <laughs> uh, he goes to draw for a <laughs> non-existent sidearm, realizes that he has none, and then he just sort of leans over the railing and looks down. Starfleet? Well, Starfleet, it is. Well, I'm obviously going, uh, you know, immediately raise my hands and just say, well, I apologize for the intrusion. <laughs> Very much so. Oh, but I mean you no harm. We only beam down here because we received your distress. And considering how, well, in our terms, how old this signal was, we thought it would be prudent to investigate with some urgency. But I suppose we're just as confused as you are. So I, again, I apologize, but, you know, we're not here to fight. Well, he looks down and he's he breathes a bit of a sigh of relief. That's good, Captain. I am not here. I don't wish to fight either. It's not something I wish to do. Um, you may call me Samil. I was, at one point, a Romulan a scientist working for the Romulan government on Xenotech. Alright, well, how did you actually end up here in the Lasai Expanse? And, more prudently, what exactly is the nature of your distress call? Captain, that is a very long story. Well, um, con considering, you know, the events that came at hand, again... All my apologies, but I think we have the time. Um, at this point, there's a subtle uh, noise being made at the entrance to the second level as a Romulan female uh, pokes her head out. Uh, she looks at her at her partner, eyes raised. He just nods silently, and she'll just sort of quickly uh, duck back. And it's not... Uh, you guys hear the sound of young children saying something like, but I want to see who came. And before she goes, shh, not now, not now. We'll, we'll, see, na we'll see them later. Well, before, uh, you know, we actually start getting to, to know each other, I'm going to tap my comm badge and just say, well, send Grill to the room. Uh, Bashir, you are receiving uh, a hail from the captain. Yes, captain. So we have encountered a settlement of Romulans on board, well, on, on this moon. So by all means, keep your senses alert, uh, continuously scan for life forms, and, <laughs> and, if you see, and if you see any other additions uh, while we're down here, please notify us right away. Can we do a scan for life forms now, just to give them a heads up? Just to... <laughs> I think that would be prudent, yes. I was just, you know... <laughs> they told me no one was out here. <laughs> what? Like, come on! You're, you're still awfully hot there, Bashir. Okay. If somebody else wants to roll for the ship, I'll... Go yep. ahead and try. Um, at, this point, it would, at this point, it would be a difficulty... I would say it's a difficulty zero, but you're already at max momentum, so I'm just going to tell you. Uh, there are a grand total of four Romulan life signs on board. And nothing, no other Romulan sign, no other life signs on the moon or in the near vicinity. There's one right next to you. <laughs> I'll relay that information to the captain so he, he's aware. Uh, okay. You know, the uh, you know, the transporter chief really should have told me there were other signals at the beam site. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a talk no. with him, sir. That's, that's a devotion. No, no harm, no foul. Uh, Captain, I, uh, he escorts you into a fairly si a fairly small, cramped uh, data center. Uh, uh, several server banks of data um, flicking in odd patterns, the occasional beep and hum. I'm sorry, Captain. Well, I'm not used to this many visitors here. I'm. Would, is there anything I can get you for food, drink? Well, uh, I look around to the rest of the away team. And to me, Ooh, water what's... is fine. 
What, what's uh, your culture? Give me, give me something that's a cultural specialty. Well, Sandwich wouldn't go amiss. Considering that this, considering that the Zell were oh. not very an imaginative species, um, my cultural dish. Uh, well, also we haven't been to the planet in about twelve years. The cultural dish out here is um, vegetables from the nearby arboretum and protein wafers. Fine with me. Very well. I, I want to get the full cultural experience. No, believe me. If you go down to the planet, you will. Anyways, Captain, I have a tale. Um, and please do not act with hostility when I say this. Um, myself and my partner, Corva, were part of the Romulan uh, Scientific Advisory Board back shortly <sighs> after... And shortly after your... Borg attack of Wolf 359 about oh, 40 years ago, I guess. We started experimenting with means to try to contact them. Um, including accessing the Transwarp network. Um, we succeeded. And we were assimilated. I would assume... But unfortunately, the story doesn't necessarily begin with a happy start. Trying to contact the board doesn't lead to, well, an uplifting scenario. Well, we didn't, we didn't know what they were at the time. We just saw a foe of the Federation bring down the greatest of their fleet in the span of a week. If the Romulans could have forged an alliance found some technology it, we would have been the power of the Alpha Quadrant or he shrugs at least that's what the Senate told us how many people did you lose small science vessel there's myself Corva uh, Darren Vox and Kasatha but no idea what happened to the other three Anyways, over time, we lived lives as drones. I don't remember much of what happened. It's probably for the best. But the, the memories that I do have were recent were of this planet and its assimilation. They, the Borg called them uh, Species 7983. They called themselves the Zell. I have no idea how many I assimilated. They were deemed of interest to the Borg Collective due to their polymath capabilities. It's fascinating. Polymath. Yes, um, how and most organics can perceive art, song these they perceive math in the same way that we would see philosophy they could their political debate structures were them were more akin to proving complex mathematical proofs as he looks down to lieutenant commander nor i think the vulcans would have found them fascinating she doesn't say anything <clears throat> hey, um jim let me break in just for a second yeah. Uh, Captain, you're getting a real strong um, feeling of unease and possibly hatred coming from uh, Commander, Tank Commander Helsing. Well, I'm going to acknowledge that. I'm going to look to Helsing, and I'm just going to give him the look of, not right now, give it together. He gives you a nod, but he's still really tense. I don't know how long I've been on this planet, but I, both Corva and I were there. Thankfully, I don't know what I'd do without her afterwards. But the, when the Sail, I believe they were the Sailiar, at least that's how they identified themselves when they offered us the choice to either ascend and continue their great plan with free will and everything that we ever had. Or we could just 
be reverted to our old selves. Captain, there's stuff going down on that planet that I knew that if I left, uh, I would leave this p I'd leave this civilization in dust, and worse, I could force it, or worse, it would spread and potentially start a new collective. So Corva and I had a split second to de made the de to decide, and we decided to stay. So you're telling me that right now, below on this class M planet, that there's definitely a chance for an entire Borg collective to spread beneath our noses? He... Uh, you get the... Uh, you get the innate and overwhelming feeling of guilt, but potentially hope from him. He's like, yes, um, we've managed to impede the collective. Um, or the impede the collective forming. And he points at all of the server equipment around you. See, the Zell are... They were a warp-capable species before their assimilation, but they didn't explore much. They stayed within this uh, stellar area, but they were really good at computational physics. And meaning? What, meaning that their, their artificial intelligence... Um, that dictated their society for the most part, you know, not in an aggressive way, just as a guiding hand, I suppose. Uh, it managed to exist simultaneously within the collective. I don't think it was ever, it wasn't ever eliminated, but it was corrupted. And when the the call came to become free, this AI believed that acted in the best interests of its people, and the best interests of its people were to stay on the planet. Uh, where so, it started to control and take over, for the lack of a better term? So, this artificial intelligence, which there, uh, has become a cultural beacon, has now become has now turned the civilization isolationist. Correct. Best way to put it. Um, I realized this is the decision that was before us. Um, if it wasn't for this constantly, for this dampening field that we were able to rig up in the blanket the planet, it would probably attempt to either to seek out more Borg technology, more Borg collective acts, hotspots. I hope there's none out there. And GM's note the Starfleet has never detected any more Borg drones. Lots of Borg technology remnants, but no active no active Borg drones. The only one who's known to have resisted the, the uh, call of the Salier was uh, Seven of Nine, Annika Hansen, who is still serving within Starfleet. So, so Mila, I have a question for you, uh, Lieutenant Alec, if you don't mind. Yes, Lieutenant. Um, if they are indeed such a threat to the galaxy, we did detect that there were deactivated weapons platforms. Could they not be reactivated and cleanse the planet? We tried. That was one of my yeah. first attempts. Uh, the Borg... Thankfully, the, um, the Borg no longer have the regeneration on personal shieldings, but there's a great number of their structures, including their most valuable ones, that have adaptive shielding on it. Um, when when I, when we managed to gain access to this structure, that was the first thing I attempted to, to do. But uh, for the most part, I've only used the weapon satellites to deter anyone from entering this world. Deter or destroy? Um, uh, the ca captain, once again, you feel a wave of sadness pass over him. I had to do what I had to do. Most were say most left with their tails between their legs. Many did not, but I had to make a call and I will not allow another person to be assimilated. So how many well, unfortunately there's no changing 
even though that disturbs me on a personal level. It disturbs Sangral on a personal level, but at this point, what's done is done, and he has to look to the future. So I ask Samil, like, how are you certain that there were no others that were able to flee this planet? I've been... I've been monitoring this planet for the last uh, 30 years. Ever since I was freed by the Bo- from the Borg. Um, my wife and I take turns checking with our uh, systems. The He pauses. Oh, yes, I forgot. Um, the artificial, the corrupt version. I've managed to find a backup, and about 10 years ago, I after re-educating it to the current situation, reintroduced it to the planet. That was my last... That was the last time I was able to get a ship out of the... Si- well, that was the last time I was able to escape the system before my last shuttle. So as near as I can tell, they've been... We have two artificial intelligences duking it out on that planet. At least it's... That's last I heard. And the... Near as I can tell... Neither is winning. It's a stalemate, but I have a better one. As he points to the servers are all over. Thirty years is a long time, Captain. I may, my wife and I may not be polymaths, but thirty years is enough time to make something better. I just need to get this system down the, to the planet and, to, and inject the... In, injected into the viniculum and we can save the species captain and at this point you get a s- forced certainty coming out of his words but quietly scan around, using the tricorder scan around for any ships that may be nearby like landing craft or okay. shuttles or what have you um, roll me an insight engineering please uh, difficulty of two difficulty two that's his vector. Uh, I'll use the small craft focus. Okay. Engineering. <clears throat> Good God, the dice are hot. Well, that would <laughs> be an extra momentum. Um, you do not det- um, you detect a shuttlecraft uh, in one of th- in a hangar bay. Uh, however, it is reading very heavily damaged. Um, you're also indicating um, uh, you're also indicating uh, Borg drones, two of them by chance. However, they are not a- they're not em- emanating life signs. You're picking up their the alloys typically associated with them. Uh, Captain, a moment? Uh, certainly. <laughs> uh, flash him the tricorder, so he's got one ship, heavily damaged, but I'm also picking up two Borg drones. Deactivated. But... Stay alert. And Alec, like, kind of shrugs his shoulders, like, he seems cool, but... He's a Romulan. So, you know. I'm right here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Captain, a life form! <laughs> Damn, the pointed ears. Oh. Thank God our, our sensors told us there are life forms here. <laughs> well, I'll return to Samil. Well, I mean, you've put me in necessarily. I can, I can no longer, I can only empathize with the life that you've lived and the difficulties encountered. But at this point, with this information that you've given me, you've put me in a difficult position. And as far as I'm able to tell, we have a situation with a board collective and your reintroduced artificial intelligence backup, regardless of which, even though there is a board presence on this planet, and might I add, on this station. So I'm going to use that a little bit, call him out, but I'm going to continue. Well, even though there's a board presence on this planet and on this station, uh, I'm not exactly... Sorry, you're not done. My apologies. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I was going to say, I'm not exactly sure 
exactly what steps I should take next. Uh, with you introducing, with you reintroducing this artificial intelligence, regardless of whatever modifications you made to it, possibly comes as a breach of the Prime Directive with interfering with this planet's culture, however that's already done already. Before I necessarily make my decision, I'd be remiss to necessarily offer you any of the services of my... If, you know, 40 years has been a long time, 30 plus years has been a long time, if there's anything that you require, uh, replicators, a uh, high restock of material, other things that, you know, may be of your interest, I'll certainly be able to provide them for you. However, in terms of dealing with this presence, I this requires greater thought. But I must insist, considering the information that you've given to me right now, and I understand that it may have come as an intrusion, but I will need to send more officers to this station. I will need to, to be able to better formulate a plan, we're going to need a better sense of the layout, so I'm going to ask you for your cooperation. Captain, it's been about ten years since I've talked with anyone n not of my family. You have my you have my full cooperation and transparency. I'm aware that your, he looks at Alec, your security officer there determined the there's traces of Borg drones. Uh, that is true. We brought back a couple deactivated one of our last trips just to see if there was any way that we could hack their operating system. But that proved futile. Uh, you will you can find their bodies in uh, storage room B if you wish. As for, if you wish to analyze my work with sorry, if you wish to analyze Corva's work with the artificial intelligence you're more than welcome to do so. Well, very well. I accept your cooperation, and we'll talk further shortly. So, uh, I'm gonna step away from him a little bit, and I'm gonna just cuddle up with the UA team and just say, "Well, it's time for you. It's time for us to actually get to the bottom of going on." And even though I sense earnesty from him, I'm not necessarily completely convinced that that everything is as kosher as you said. It does always more complicated when Borgo are involved. So, to the pair of engineers that we have available to us right now, go with Corva, take a look at her work, and see if you could get your hands on the modifications that Samil and Corva made to the backup AI before they reintroduced it to the plant. I want to make sure that there's no other hidden secrets that he did, whether that may or may not advance Romulan interests. Or may make things more difficult for us in the future. And by all means, to our illustrious doctor, offer your services to Samuel and his family. And I'll go comms the ship to ask them to send down a few replicators and a couple other supplies. Excellent. And security officers. <laughs> Rich, turn to Corva. Well, Corva, lead the way. Corva uh, takes yourself and. Um, one zero and one one. Uh, she'll take you through a short hallway. Um, you, it's not hard to see that this play, that this part is more of a residential area. There's children's toys all over the place, and uh, your and your antenna quiver at the sound of hurried or of hushed whispers coming from behind one of the doors. As what you suspect are two Romulan children eavesdropping. Ah, uh, natural for them to be curious. The quick sense. question there, GM. Yes. Um, how big are we talking for the for the station? Uh, station itself isn't all that large. Eh, okay, it is kind of large. It has at least a full shuttle pad. Um, I would say it is the size of a moderate-sized house. Okay. Yep. So you're not staring at each other all day, every day for the rest of your lives. You have other rooms to wander into. Uh, there is a, a pair of storerooms. There is the main area that you're in right now. Uh, there's the server room, computational alcove area. <clears throat> and all sorts of dated ports and computers lying around. As well as a small habitation area for uh, where people sleep. All in all, they've done okay for themselves, being a 
set of Romulans living uh, Robinson Crusoe style. Okay, so uh, Lieutenant uh, so Shras and the Binars, Corva will um, j- uh, Corva will bring you into the area w- where the AI is stored. Well, actually, she's pretty much in the area to begin with, and she'll bring up a terminal and just gesture at it, and here you are. Um, right. GM, before you go on that, yes. um, I call, I pull, motion to Tenant Commander Kenor to come over to me for a quick second, where we're out of earshot from Samel. So Mel knows when he's not wanted and just turns around and goes back to working on his computer. Um, Commander Knorr, can you do a quick scan with your medical tricorder of Samel, Corva, and their two children and compare them to normal Romulan bio signs? Just have a sneaking hunch. No. <laughs> um... Yeah, she she uh, nods and just turns her tricorder around towards uh, as Corva kind of wanders over to that console and and uh, discreetly scans her and then turns towards the door um, and scans it in the rough direction of Somiel, who's I imagine further away at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, GM, do I detect anything out of the ordinary? Okay, so I would have set that at a difficulty two. Uh, so you, you're detecting perfectly normal life signs. Um, the only thing that is of note is, given their age, um, is they appear far younger than they should be. Um, not knowing how... Oh, I guess as a Vulcan and being Vulcan and Romulan, they are fairly close physiologically. Um, it's possible that the assimilation and uh, free uh, subsequent freedom has allowed them to maintain their youth. But you don't think they are as old as they should be. She um, looks at the tricorder, perks a brow, but slightly less than before, and then turns uh, to Lieutenant Commander Helsing and says, they appear to not have aged. However, that could be merely due to the uh, Borg nanites that were running through their veins and their subsequent change afterwards. And then she just kind of folds it up and puts it back in her little pocket. You see a sense of slight relief from from a She nods and says, besides that, they appear perfectly normal. All right, so folks looking at the artificial intelligence, uh, this would be um, an insight, si- either an insight science or an insight engineering task. And if you have something like computer systems or artificial intelligence, that would count as a focus. And uh, this is going to be a difficulty of four. So you say was for me? Uh, whichever one of you wishes. Yeah, so you and the binars. Uh, yeah. So I would suggest that, well, if anyone has artificial intelligence, then they could take the lead, and then the other could assist. Um, you said the children were behind a door, right? That is correct. Yes. Probably because mom doesn't want them talking to strangers right away. <laughs> Just take a look. Uh, okay, so no, I don't have any focuses that apply. I only have power systems, which doesn't work. Okay. Uh, okay. Who's got, um, who's got the binars? What do they have? I can go grab the binars. Okay. Seems like they got data analysis, sensor operation, and computer science. Well, the computer science could work. They could take the lead, and the in, the chief engineer could assist. All right, one Why don't you show me what you got? Sure. I am rolling one for these guys. We're going to say this is a reason engineering. Yep. Uh, uh, insight engineering. Insight actually. engineering. Insight. Okay. My bad. That's okay. Okay. So um, roll. Oh, uh, one of you needs to roll one more dice. Um, the binars, oh, he was taking the lead, right? Binar's, binar's taking the lead. Oh. Yeah. 
I was like, I'm only I'm All right, I'll just roll. Yeah. This Once is a difficulty more. four. Oh, maybe we should have spent. Now we can spend a momentum. Mm. Yeah, a little late now, I'm afraid. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you give the code a thorough look. Uh, as much a look over as you can within about 30 minutes and it does seem to be very advanced um, Corva seems to take some pride in this and tells um, well proudly say that you know before I took this I was an exobiologist I'm very pleased that I was able to make these modifications and she's more than happy to point out the where the base code was uh, versus where the modifications happen. Primarily, the changes are how uh, will affect the processing speed and reactionary times of the of the artificial intelligence. Um, and she does say, if it's if it helps allay your fears, uh, this particular AI has been the one in charge of the jamming signal uh, modulation frequencies for the last ten years. It has been keeping pace and at sometimes predicting and beating um, the infected intelligence down below. Hmm. Well, I assume we'll have to we'll have to be good enough. We've taken a look and uh, I don't think we found anything that uh, worth reporting. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, oh, sorry, were you? Anything else? Oh no, 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 no okay. go ahead. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Liam Helsing, um, you are overseeing the deployment of further security personnel, and giving the base a full once-over. Uh, you are res one of your uh, lieutenants uh, comes over and says, "Sir, there's a scan-proof uh, room that is at the rear end of this facility that we." That is locked. All other doors are open, sir. Except the door to that scan-proof room. Correct, sir. Roger. Um, Commander Helsing to uh, Captain. Single here. Go ahead. Uh, sir, we have a building that's scan-proof. All other doors of the facility have been unlocked, but this this little facility has locked door and is scan proof. Can you ask Samel about this, please? Uh, well, I will indeed. By all means, keep me informed and still watch for any other move. Hi, sir. Well, I'll go ahead. Before I go contact Samel, I'm going to actually comms the ship and see with our advanced sensor suite, mm -hmm. they actually have the ability to uh, identify anything else that's going on with the room itself. Maybe they may not be able to pierce uh, the scan-proof room with the advanced sensor suite, but maybe they have the ability to tell exactly where this uh, where this power, this, this distortion is coming from. Okay. Um, so, from the ship Bashir, uh, Commander Shear, that would be a reason science, and the ship can assist with sensor science, and due to it being a shielded, uh, this will be a difficulty of three. Okay. I will use momentum. Okay. Is, is your voice all right? You're sounding awfully raspy. <laughs> yeah, cold. Oh, man, rough. Okay. Man. So he'll use one momentum for an extra dice. Cool. And let's see what the ship rolls. Or Bashir rolls three, so awesome. Hmm. Let's see what the ship rolls. Sensor science. Sensor science. Uh, you get that momentum right back, so back to six. Yes. And a bonus. And the right. bonus to ask questions. Um, you are... Whatever is jamming the... Or whatever is causing the uh, shielding is not powerful enough to defeat the sensors of a ship that is literally built for covert sensors. Um, it is an explosive device that is actually banned by um, by pretty much any sort of intergalactic treaty. It's 
um, your uh, your computer will display an alert message and immediately take you to the um, the deeper the weapon schematics for a proton bomb a proton bomb is a device that is capable of wiping out all organic matter within a 1000 kilometer radius okay it is also deactivated I should say that <laughs> Um, I will immediately relay this information back to the captain. <laughs> okay, then. Well, uh -huh. that changes things. Before I um, actually confront some mill about this, I want to make sure if, uh, if this bum actually were to become active, how quickly do you think you guys would be able to get a lock on it and disable it? Because I may have yeah. to necessarily take this act. Well, I mean, that's me asking the crew. Because I may have to necessarily take this action without his knowledge, and I'm not really here to go ask for me, considering that he kept this from me. So just in case, I want to know if I gotta if I gotta put the pedal to the metal. I want to know if I'd be able to take the medals into my own hands and just you know take care of the bomb. Does Nor hear this? Does Kanor hear this and Nor know about the bomb? I don't see why not. Um. It's a fairly small facility, and you have Vulcan hearing. Okay. Uh, it, once he, uh, he start, the captain starts talking about that, she will like slowly walk up to him and whisper, it is entirely likely that the explosive device is a failsafe in case the Borg spread. Oh, well, I'm sure that's a likely. Still don't necessarily like the idea of it being here, nor do I like the idea of exterminating the planet. That's not what I'm here to do. The alternative may be far worse. Oh, we'll deal with the alternative if it, if and when it could possibly. I'm not here to play hypotheticals. Out of character. Maybe you shouldn't be an intelligence then. <laughs> well, I, it's right. He's learning. He still he still has his morality, at least a little bit. He's still trying to attempt to be a Starfleet officer. But yeah, I mean, he's here for a reason. And we'll get rid of that morality. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly and steadily. You guys get to one. You guys get to one random re uh, region of space, and immediately <laughs> see, like, see 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 where the chips are starting to fall. So, can I get an engineering crew together and see if we can find a way to remove the uh, device from up here? Absolutely. In fact, uh, weapons systems is one of uh, Lieutenant Cassatt's focuses. Uh, so he is actually, he takes a great deal of eagerness in looking over the device for a proton bomb and mentions on more than one occasion how he's never been allowed to build one. Uh, the... Yeah. Um, Doesn't the, fill me with confidence. I mean, I haven't been allowed either, so. Yeah, but I don't know if you've actually asked. Um, the. Uh, all in all, if you can get a solid transporter lock on the device, uh, based on what you're able to determine uh, from readily available sources, it would take roughly five minutes for a, a safe deactivation. Um, if the bomb goes active, it takes roughly 10 minutes for the uh, for all for all four chambers to reach the uh, resonance frequency required to release to trigger the explosion. Um, well, if nobody else necessarily has, wants to jump it, go in once, go in twice. I had sold, then I'll go confront some mail about the proton. Alright. You find uh, Samil and Korva just keeping out of your guys' way, uh, making some uh, uh, protein some protein wafers and vegetable dinner for the children. Uh, and thanks to a recently uh, provided replicator, they get to have ice cream for the first time. Needless to say, the kids are thrilled. 
So we see the kids? Uh, yes, they've been... It's hard to... It's hard to uh, avoid the children now that you've basically been given free range to the base. Uh, there are I've been... Young boy, young girl. I've been fearing freaky little boar kids running around. Nope, they are as Romulan as Romulan can be. Uh, you estimate one of them to be about eight years old, the other one to be ten. Um... <clears throat> Uh, so Mill looks up and realizing, the, immediately recognizing the face on uh, Commander Singral, uh, you immediately get a sense of dread from him as he'll just sort of motion you off into an, an alcove. Well, I'll follow him. Captain, you found the bomb, didn't you? Oh, yeah, well, amongst other things, yes. Uh, yeah. That was plan B. If the... If I was... If we were unable to find a way to contain the Borg to this planet, and if my... If I couldn't... If I was unable to deploy a better artificial intelligence to wrest control of the population free them. We were going to, well, plan B was to nuke the main continent. Listen, nobody knows better than I the, the, and you, unfortunately, through life experience, you know, the destructive capabilities of unchecked Borg. However, I'm not necessarily personally in the business of genocide. Well, I understand that, you know, the situation has extenuating circumstances. I, that is definitely not something that I even want remotely on the table. Do you think I want to genocide, commit genocide, Captain? In the Romulan state, it was all about the greater whole of the Empire surviving small sacrifices had to be made for the prosperity of the Empire. If a sacrifice of this scale of, by my last count, six million people guarantees the well-being of six billion, six trillion, that's math for you, Captain. Well, I understand that you may necessarily have your variation of the axiom of the needs of the many. But now that I'm not here, I have no intention of necessarily leaving this planet up to, to fate and hy you know, hypothetical statistics. What happens, happens. And if necessary, now I know that it exists. But I have no intention of using it. We'll find another way. He breathes a sigh of relief. Thank you, Captain. It's... If it makes... Your, if it puts your mind at ease this, this bomb has not been even looked at in the last eight years I can't stand to look at the thing now that I have children well be that as it may I'd like you to necessarily assist my security officers and my engineers in, dis in disarming the device if we need to use its payload for any other reason then we'll put it back together on our own terms but now, I want this thing disabled. Very well. We can do that. And he will walk off as immediately being flanked by Liam Helsing and one of the security officers. And <laughs> Lieutenant Cassatt has insisted to see the device personally. Make sure he doesn't actually put his hands on it and he offers his assistance only. Lieutenant Cassatt just sort of nods. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Knorr, what are you doing during all of this? Um, well, before I was going to see if I could get any kind of read on anybody here, but we have an empath, so I don't think that's necessary. Um, so besides that, she's just gonna run various sensor scans with her tricorder, um, when the kids are there, she's going to actually show kind I don't know what the word is for, you know, a Vulcan, but I guess, like, 
deference. Like she's she's unlike you would potentially think that most Vulcans might just kind of ignore kids. She kind of I'm not going to say she smiles, but she definitely puts away the tricorder and kind of stand moves a little bit closer and watches them intently. Um, and besides, but besides that, probably not much. All right. Uh, so the overall health of the two children are as well as can be expected due to the um, l- slightly lesser gravity. Their bones are not developing as fully and they're running a slightly less muscular structure, but they are doing as well as can be expected for young children who've lived only in a very small portion of a low gravity system. Um, what would be the effect if they were like, for example, beamed onto a uh, earth type gravity? Uh, Short term would be um, extreme uh, fatigue. Well, not, not extreme fatigue because kids are literally batteries, but th- <laughs> they would f- find themselves tiring out quicker until their muscles got used to and re acclimatized. But once as they haven't even hit puberty yet, I don't know what puberty cycle is for Romulans, and that strikes me as something that the internet has figured out, but I don't want to know. Um, once they hit puberty, you suspect a full, they whatever flaw, ah, whatever um, f- faults they have now, they'd quickly grow out of. Hey, you okay. could always go ask the RG. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm sure they have an answer again. Yeah, yeah. As much as I admire what Thurgy does in terms of grand stories and roleplay potential, some of it delves a little off scope for my tastes. But yes. Well, in any case, uh, considering that everything is being done right now, and all these and all these people are being busy worker bees. I'm going to beam back to the ship, and I'm gonna calm and uh, go tell that. Go, I'm gonna go calm Helsing and just tell him that you know he's in charge of the the away team while I'm while I return to the ship and confer with Commander Bashir. Okay. Uh, do you have any specific scenes you'd like to do with Bashir on the ship? Oh well, yeah, in this case we're actually going to meet personally in the ready room. Ah, okay, so ready room scene. You got it. You are here, and so is Bashir. So, Commander, I trust you that you've necessarily been informed on all the uh, current goings on on the on the away team. I have. So, in that case, you're aware of the predicament that we're in. Even though I do have a plan of action in place, I'd like to solicit your advice. Well. I do not agree with the fact that the genocide of the entire species. I think we should look for an alternative route. Well, I agree exactly the reason why I had the bomb disabled at this point in time. Are we thinking of enlisting their program? Well, in that case, the program has already been sent to the planet. What I still needed to determine exactly was what modifications were done for it, when done to it. At this point in time, I'm considering that we might necessarily have to intervene, but I need to know exactly what that what that backup AI enlisted to do, and how exactly we may be able to reset this rightful course. At this point in time, even though it would normally be a breach of a contraction, considering that there is board presence on this planet, I believe that our intervention is necessary. And a, and a, a collective that is brought to full strength in this region of space, considering the proximity to a transwarp hub, is not exactly the best thing. We need to take care of this here and now. I agree. <sighs> In that case, here's what I propose. Depending on whatever the findings are from the away missions from the away team and exactly what changes they've made to the AI will most likely assist them. We're here to help them get their culture and their planet back on track, regardless of their prior interference. And if we have the ability to reset the AI and in that case be able to reset this collective species to a time before they were assimilated, then however they choose to interact with us going forward is on them. And in that case, 
we'd have to be prepared for first contact scenarios. I'm thinking hopefully if for any event that we manage to fail or if there's some other unforeseen issue that comes up that we don't necessarily have time to anticipate or correct, then in that case, I'm ordering you to consider the use of the, the proton bomb. But I, I don't want you. I do not want you to use it to exterminate the planet or to exterminate the species. I want you to use it. To I want you to use it and modify it to destroy subspace in this area, leaving them incapable of warp travel. If they're unable to leave the planet, then at the very least, they can continue to be isolationists. Ooh. Okay. Do you understand? Do you understand the orders I've given? Absolutely. Yes, I can start uh, working on. I can put a team together and start working on uh, the reassignment of the weapon immediately. Remember, it's only there as a last resort. We're not sure. here to kill anybody, but in that case, we want to keep them here and make sure nobody else has the ability to interfere with these people, as the like this like Romulans unfortunately have done. Absolutely, Captain. No problem. Right, very well, then. Well, you have your orders. Uh, continue to confer with the away team. I have some calls to make. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, just a quick reminder in case I didn't explain something quite clearly. So, the AI that Romulans had sent to the planet, Mark 1, we'll just say, uh, has been duking it out with the uh, artificial, or the corrupted intelligence now for some time. The intelligence that they're asking you to bring down is Mark II, and has been active at least on the station now for the last several years. Um, based on findings of your officers, it appears to be pretty much the same, at least um, altruistically, as the first version, but it has a much higher uh, response time. Okay. Which seems to be when you're talking about computers, every millisecond counts, and I this see. one seems to be able to react faster than what they believe that the Borg intelligence has been able to do. All right. Well, if at least available to me, it seems like in this case it's a battle of you know computer processing powers and wells. Mm -hmm. So most likely I'll be able to, I'll I'll, I'll do the risky move and open up the ship's computer systems if necessary to help assist with this, this confrontation. But I'll obviously I'll run this by our engineers first. I'll make, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll make it transparent to the captain that um, we couldn't find anything like hidden or malicious as far as we can tell, but I'll also be clear that we were not able to fully crack the, um, the encryption either. Yes, trying to figure out 10 years worth of work in an hour or two is challenging. Yeah, at a quick glance we, we think it should be okay, but I, I can't say with 100% certainty um, given how, how well encrypted the system was. Can, and, and, but, can we quarantine like a system like use extra space or something that where we so we're not in, if, if something goes wrong like our ship would not get infected with this AI somehow, some way. Can we find like a subsystem or something along that way? Uh, certainly, the ship has hol a hollow deck, and a com and any number of subs of systems can be uh, virtually or physically sandboxed from interfering with other s other systems. I mean, yeah, yeah, nothing can go wrong there. Uh, deck, yeah, yeah. If the captain asks for, I can, I can get to get to work on that right away. Can I set yeah. up? What about using his shuttle as the as the carrier? It may not have the processing power, but if it's been to and from the planet before, it might have some some easy way or a, a predetermined Borg signature or something, so it can pass through. Um, a brief. As I'm assuming you're already crawling over and inside the shuttle there. 
Oh yes. Naturally. Oh yes. Um do me a favor and roll me an insight plus con check. Insight plus con. Uh okay. Can I use my small craft as a focus? Absolutely. Alright. Insight plus con. Hmm. Momentum or not momentum? Uh, uh, I should say that this is a difficulty of one. Oh, no momentum then. Thank God for that. <laughs> okay, so there is... Um, you know what? I think I'll just take threat for that because I haven't taken threat for anything yet. So I'll add that to my bank. Uh, you determine that the... Uh, sh the shuttle has been breached atmospherically in at least three different places. Um, one of its um, uh, one of its thrusters is completely pooched. The other one would work. Um, you're able to pull out the needed pref at least the last set of prefix codes that were used um, to get in and out. Uh, the shuttle can fly, but it's not in good shape right now. I'll, I'll, as the as the rest of the goings on is is going on, um, <clears throat> I'll just spend my time sort of repairing the shuttle as best as I can and getting it okay. not space worthy, but at least safe in case they had to make an emergency escape. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah. because you are a flight officer, I believe that you can actually do that with your con skill instead I of an sure engineer. Um, this will be a. Uh, let's see. It doesn't. Hypothetically, it should be an extended task, but that I don't see it being a difficult enough extended task to actually warrant it. So let's do this as um, uh, let's see, control plus and control plus con with a difficulty of uh, two. Control plus con. Well, congratulations. Uh, you have fixed the shuttle. Ah, uh, uh, the it balancing is, act of dice. It is, um, it is a fully space-worthy ship again. Uh, you believe it'll make warp four without any real problems. Um, however, in doing so, you have accidentally wiped the computer system. So you, you got the last set of Borg transcodes, or the Borg prefix codes, but those are 10 years old, and you don't have a means, an obvious means of generating a new set if you need to. Well, that's for a future LAC to worry about. Uh, rejoin the away party. Oh, right. Well, their shuttle, their shuttle can fly. I've got prefix codes. They're 10 years old, but that's how the shuttle uh, gave up before. Well, let's not go into what happened. Something, something, not an engineer, something, something, computer wipe. Yeah, so I believe it is currently... Let's just beam back down to the planet then, shall we? Uh, nope, that's not it. This is it. So it, the captain went up, and it's just now, you guys. <laughs> Roger, so we got a team working on the mm -hmm. thermonuclear proton bomb. Yep, um, Lieutenant Cassatt is extremely happy that you have given him such an interesting challenge. <laughs> and I tell one of the security guys to keep a really close eye on Cassatt. Yes, well, as extremely happy as a Vulcan could be. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Knorr would definitely notice the odd levels of emotion coming from him, where... Oh, she would walk over to him then. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll watch him for a few seconds or a few minutes, and then she won't say anything. She'll just make sure she's in his line of sight and give him a very curious... Lieutenant Commander. Yes? Is there something I can be... I can assist you with? <laughs> I do not think so, Lieutenant. I am just fascinated by your level of fascination. Hmm. He shrugs. 
a, a, a minuscule shrug. Yes, I've always found the... I've always had a particular fascination for the destructive capabilities of exotic weapons. And the... And how it always seems to be that Starfleet finds ways to deactivate them or turn them into tools for a more demure purposes. She folds her hands in front of her and nods and says, and the only thing that she says is, indeed, and then turns and heads out and goes back to watching the kids and continuing her tricorders. Okay, so we are at this point in the story. I believe we're about ready to commence the final act, so let's all take a break. And we can resume... Uh, we can resume... Uh, be back here at... Well, let's just say be back here on the hour. So I will quickly mute the stream...
like this. All right, welcome back, folks. And we are ready to figure out what we're going to do to save a planet. <clears throat> oh, right. So um, back down the planet, we'll take uh, Kassat working on the bomb to do what the captain said to deactivate it. It's got a uh, small security detail. I also want to take two security personnel, uh, an engineer, and uh, Lieutenant Commander Kanor and go over to where the deactivated air quotes drones are. Okay, so you're looking at the drone medic, or the drone, you're looking at the deactivated drones with the medic. Okay. Uh, correct. Want the engineer and um, Lieutenant Commander Kanor to take a look at them, make sure they're really deactivated, and or is there a way to start them back up again? Okay. Not that we would. Not that you would, but you know. Um, so the there are two of these. So there are two Zellborg, and the they're fairly easy. It's ah, it's fairly easy to see that they will not be getting back up again, as most of their cybernetics parts have been physically separated from their uh, organic parts. And for those of you that look that are familiar with the different how the Borg have changed between Next Generation and First Contact or Voyager. Uh, these Borg look a lot more primitive, so they look more Next Generation style. So they're big, they're bulky, and they're kind of sluggish. Or they would be if they were fully together and awake, but they're not that, so you're fine. The organic components haven't decomposed? They appear to have been preserved at least in some sort of primitive stasis, stasis bed. They are slowly decomposing, but not at any great speed. All right, so all the internal nanites and all that are gone. Correct. Um, if there are nanites or nanoprobes, they seem to change what they're called. I never can keep them straight. The Borg nanoprobes are present in the um, cybernetic parts, but they've been completely flushed out of the organic parts. Uh, Lieutenant Kenor realize will realize real quick that these, the cyber or the organic parts have been uh, bled out, similar to how a hunter will drain its trophy. Interesting. So are these just, are these hung up like it's turning a deer up, or are they no, just not anymore. stuck in a corner? They probably were at one point. They're in uh, storage room A. They're uh, sort of, they're sort of in a, what appears to be a repurposed freezer. Okay. Nor, I'm sorry that we brought you over here for nothing. It's okay. It seems the protein wafers uh, is not the only thing that they eat. It's her attempt at a poor joke. And I cock my eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, guess we'll head back over to the main building, send the engineer to go help Kassat. And I'm going to go talk to Samil for a moment. Okay. Yes, Mr. Helsing. Uh, yes, sir. Just want to make sure I understand that you are com completely cured of the Borg virus, and you can do this, you think, for the people on the planet? Captain, I haven't heard the collective in my head ever since I was uh, freed from their freed from their control. Uh, Korva is more of the biologist than I am, and she's looked at both of us and determined that there's no nanoprobes or uh, Borg cybernetic implants left in us. Near or there's... I... Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Ah, near as I can tell, I am as good a Romulan as I ever was. Does he have any scarring for where the implants would be? 
no and that is a feature that was noticed on seven of nine um as well when her when she was freed uh from the uh borg when all when all the borg technology was pulled out of all the organics uh they all of their uh, implants reverted to this techno magical substance known as katums um whatever the Salyar used to pro it's literally programmable matter um so they don't leave scars they just leave a uh they somehow merge with the dna of their host i have to tell you what you're saying is what we called on earth a miracle he nods I can agree. It was... I don't know what happened. I don't know why the Salier chose then to free everyone. All I know is that I am... Even out here, far away from any place that would remotely be called home, I am in a far better place than I was ever uh, prior. And I mean... How long ago, you know, how old were you when you were assimilated? I was uh, 41 years old. Because you look remarkable for, it's been what, 50 years since then? He nods. (laughs) Yes, that is... I'm hoping it's a side effect from good Borg regeneration technology. He sort of smiles sadly and shrugs. Or it could be however we were freed from the collective. I have no idea. But I lost several years of my life as a Borg drone, and I'm not going to lose another. That's I sincerely hope that's what we can make happen from this and potentially take this type of cure to other places that have been ravaged and savaged by the Borg. Um, Korva brings out, uh, interrupting the moment, uh, Korva steps out of the server farm holding a, a techno box roughly Uh, one foot wide by two foot uh, tall by one foot deep and she'll pass it to the binars and say this is the uh, full uh, intelligence 2.0 ready for insertion if this is what you wish Uh, the binars look at one another and sort of each of them take half of its weight and one goes it's lighter than the other it's lighter than we expected far more potent too this is great okay and she's, um, she says well if if your captain wishes we have the uh, coordinates for the uh, Borg Viniculum that it needs to be put in. And I, she shrugs. It's, Thank you, ma'am. Yes, it is a task that I wish you all the best at. We will make a very valiant attempt in doing so. I have a question Captain? for the GM. Oh, sorry, yes. Go ahead. Question for the GM. Um, and this may be some, probably something that the, my character would know, uh, but what is the subspace communication distance between here and, say, the nearest Romulan outpost or colony? Is is it like a huge distance where if they sent a message it would take weeks or months, or is it relatively... It is a... You are roughly 400 light years from Federation space. So about another 470, 480 light years to the nearest uh, Romulan 
Romulan planet. If you want to talk to embassies, you can probably argue that there will be one on Earth or other closer. But it would definitely take... I I looked this up once. It would take maybe a month, m month and a half for a subspace message to make it back. Okay. Um, do we know if they attempted to contact their people from here? Um, you, no one's asked, but you haven't seen any... Um, you haven't seen any indication of a subspace antenna. Um, just uh, that communication doesn't seem to be... Uh, all the communication energy is diverted into keeping the distortion field in one piece. Okay. Uh, when y'all are done talking about stuff that's important, uh, Kanor wants to talk to Korva about, like, other things. Of course. And, Doctor, what can I do for you? Um, C Commander Kanora wants to ask, uh, why ha um, have you... I do not see any subspace antennas. Have you not tried to contact your people for uh, replacements in the last 40 years? Or, or is there something uh, keeping you from doing that? Uh, it has not... Given their close proximity to one another, the Zell never developed subspace technology, or subspace communication technology. Uh, they, given Samil's dedication to keeping the Bor the Zellborg contained, it's just not been a high priority. And she also says, besides, I'm not entirely certain I trust we trust Romulans, Romulus anymore. Can you imagine what the Romulus, what Romulan Empire might have, might do if they discovered this artificial intelligence, or the or fact that we have an entire pocket or collective? Not to mention the bomb. Well, she shrugs. In all honesty, that's a fairly old piece of technology. But yes. Um. Okay. Uh, I, I, the line of dialogue that I had in my head is, I don't think it's gonna go that way. So I'm just gonna. She's just gonna nod and and turn back to whatever she was doing. Fair enough. Basically, she was gonna be like, "Hey, let's just get you guys out of here and bring like an actual team of scientists and engineers and." security and intelligence people from the Federation and the Romulan Empire and actually do this the right way, but I don't think it would go that way. Yeah, um, you've seen, um, being a medical officer, you've seen um, it where people can become obsessed with their goal to the exclusion of everything else. And the your your uh, judgment of these people is their intentions are good, but they have become extremely hyper-focused to the extent of almost everything else. Okay. They'll just keep an eye on on them then. For, mm -hmm. From us, she, she has a focus in psychology, so she's yeah. she basically wants to make sure that they're not becoming... Uh, I don't want to use the word isolationist, but basically like uh, like like recluse or like um, hermit. Well, basically they're just like, even once the Borg are, uh, you know, once the aliens are completely freed from the Borg, they they might decide, oh, I'm going to stay on this space, on this moon for the rest of our lives anyway, even though we don't have to. Like, she's looking out for stuff like that right. from a psychological perspective. Okay. okay. Understandable. Okay. Um, cool. Right. Um, with that, I'll call up to uh, Nighthawk. Captain, this is uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing. Same go ahead. We have, the, we have the Intelligence 2.0. Uh, the bomb, has the bomb been deactivated at this point? Uh, the bomb has been deactivated, uh, but it will take about 30 minutes. It'll take about 30, 40 minutes for Kassat to be reliably certain that it will uh, damage subspace instead of organic matter. 
the uh, um, the bomb is de is deactivating if we're seeing along um, your previous orders, and we checked out the um, two board drones deactivated. Um, they are deactivated. We won't see anything more from them. <laughs> understood. Understood. Well, if there's nothing necessarily um, more pressing or anything else that the Romulans are requesting, uh, recall all senior officers and other type of uh, mission materiel and return to the Nighthawk for a briefing. Okay. One of my favorite scenes ever, the conference room scene. Okay. Okay, so it'll take a few minutes for everyone to assemble. Corva uh, snuck aboard somehow. <clears throat> well, she is Romulan. Yes, yes, but she's given up that sneaky way of life. I knew she was something about her. <laughs> this is all an elaborate Talshiar hoax. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> right? Likewise. Okay, do you wish to have anyone else attend? Um, who we got here? Who we missing? Is Kassat done, or is he still down? Kassat's still down on the planet. He'll need about 30, 40 minutes. Okay. I guess I could remain there along with our contingent of security officers, but if we have all senior officers here, then... Then I think we're, we're good. Um, Excellent. Alright then. Well, in that case... I'm sure everybody in this room is up to speed and get again with the uh, goings on and the away mission. And you should know that we necessarily have a uh, difficult mission to undertake. One that could necessarily change the. Uh, not One that could change not only the uh, potential of balance of the power in this region of space, but possibly turn it for the worse. Cause more of a, uh, an upstanding issue than we could ever could have anticipated. Uh, with. Uh, the potential of this board collective along with the information that we have gathered in this region of space along with their proximity to a transwarp hub I think we could all agree that stopping this and being able to right this wrong is our highest priority in that case I have decided to go ahead with uh, Samal's plan and we are going to attempt to reintroduce this artificial intelligence to back into the culture and to see if that has any effect on uh, being able to free this collective and be able to right this wrong, if that's the case, then fingers crossed. I'm looking to the future. I'm an optimist that we'd all have to prepare for first contact scenarios. In that case, the prime directive will once again apply. And however we decide to proceed with the species will be bound to the ideals of the Federation Charter. However, first things comes first. We need to find a way to be able to reintegrate this AI safely and be able to adjust the course of this planet's development. In that case, I am planning to use the Nighthawk to, and then sensors to scan uh, the planetary service along with reacquiring, um, reacquiring the helm and navigation codes from a uh, small shuttle using that out could uh, plot a plan of attack and be able to better reintroduce the AI in a plan that's already familiar that he's taken before. Once in that case, I expect to have a team of engineers and scientists on site being able to to establish a, a data uplink with the Nighthawk and use our computer systems if necessary to allow the AI to better reintegrate and fight off this corrupted Borg AI. If all goes according to plan and things happen as we intend them to, then hopefully it's not. Hopefully it goes well. If not, then an alternative has been prepared. Any questions? I just got back. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> well, I just have. I just have one question, sir. When this AI gets reintroduced, do we know exactly what's going to happen? No, we do not. And at this point, I'm assuming that I myself actually has have hands on this data cube module, right? Ah, uh, yes. The binary has brought it back to the 
brought it back to the Night Nighthawk. It's currently sitting in a um, in an isol ah, in an isolation field in the data lab. Well, I'm going to go comes into the data lab and ask them to access it and use the Nighthawk systems to uh, to understand it a little bit better. Because probably the computer systems that we have on here are a little bit, you know, better than exactly what the away team had on it. We're still necessarily looking for, you know, any hidden programming, but I'd also like to find out because, I mean, you mentioned that it was semi-altruistic, and I'd like to see if we could gain more information about the culture of their society based on the directives of this AI or the little that we've gleaned from it. Okay. Okay, um, so the binars will plug it in um, into a sandboxed um, data data manipulation terminal, and it will immediately spring to life and immediately start asking a boatload of questions, which the binars are uniquely capable of quickly answering in their uh, data speak, for lack of a better term. Well, in that case, um, I'm going to ask the binaries if they actually have the ability to uh, determine, um, you know, the uh, AI's intentions and its cultural its cultural values. Um, the binaries will uh, res the binaries will respond quickly. Uh, one of them seems to be continuously talking to the uh, artificial intelligence, whereas. Um, it seems to call itself theorem, and the other the other one is talking to you at more organic speeds. Um, theorem theorem's activation um, parameters are to combat the or act against the corrupted intelligence, and to allow its allow the um, beings that were, have previously been enslaved by the um, or by the uh, corrupt intelligence to once again uh, have free will. Uh, there is a moderate amount of societal programming based on what the what the Romulans were able to recover from the first go around. Most of it is um, sort of ancient Greek styling um, in terms of governmental processes, uh, philosophy, um, overall uh, democratic values, not much in the way of art or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, art, I guess is the best word for it. Um, not much in the way of artistic values, but a lot of societal and um, yeah, a lot of societal values. How would it deal with first con or an outside influence approaching uh, the planet as a whole? Well, um, it has already gained a significant amount of information from the binar as to where it currently is and the um, presence of hmm, the presence of the Federation. It seems to understand that the Federation and the Romulans are a friendly force, whereas the corrupted AI on the planet is not a friendly force and it also seems to understand that there is remnants of its predecessor that is also a friendly force. Beyond that it does not have enough data to input a pr uh, to form a conclusion at this time. How long are we expecting the the AI to actually successfully propagate? Um, it is currently unclear However, um, up in orbit, there's min very little communication down to the planet, so no one's really sure how far the AI, the existing AI battle has gone. Last indications indicated pretty much a stalemate, but that may have changed. Hmm. Either way, this, uh, this AI believes that it should be able to eradicate ex all existence of the infection within a reasonable amount of time. Do we have to deliver this in person to the, the vinicula? Correct. Um, you have been given 
coordinates of the Viniculum. It appears to be in a uh, fairly large city of sorts. Well, it is a city, not of sorts. Literal city. Captain, may I make a bold suggestion? Go ahead. I'm welcome to any and all suggestion. We have the Spectre, our mini little gunship. Has excellent engines, maneuverability, and weapons and speed. So a small insertion into the viniculum, and then secure perimeter, and then beam down a security detail. I was already thinking something of a similar, uh, of a similar style. The Spectre is uniquely equipped to be able to take on exactly this sort of mission. Alack practically wets himself with excitement. <laughs> uh GM, I have a question. Yes. I, I might have I might have missed it, but it, what is the reason for having to do this in person? Why can't we just shoot it down to the planet? Um, there is uh, Borg shielding is in place to prevent weapons fire. Um, the um, bah, the um, sorry, lost my train of thought. Weapons fire. Oh yes, uh, the distortion field pre prohibits a any communication uh, into or out of the planet, and if it's not injected into the viniculum itself, there is a possibility that it will not spread fast enough. Okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, v the viniculum's purpose is to uh, coordinate the local hive of any Borg ship. Um, so if you can inject it either into the viniculum itself or close to it that get, that is the highest guarantee of success alright alright then well in that case uh, Lieutenant Elak I would like you to prepare the USS Spectre for departure uh, Commander Helsing I'd like you to work with Lieutenant Elak and I'd also like you to prepare the electronic warfare systems to assist the AI with reintegration into the vinicula. If we could use them, if we could have a uh, comm systems routed to, with the Nighthawk to be able to communicate, you, use the uh, Spectre as a routing point to allow us to use ship systems to assist, then that would be just wonderful. Uh, sir, and for the security detail, uh, body armor, phaser rifles? Phaser rifles at a modulating frequency, no doubt. Alright. And body armor? Of course. Alright. There is a price to pay. Yep. Um, if you take body armor and phaser rifles, that uh, gives an escalation cost, which means I get a little bit more threat. But well, also, can... you're dealing with Borg, so. If <laughs> we're going down to a planet possibly completely full of Borg, then we're going exactly. to get yep. back in. Now, there How is... could it possibly get worse? There is one house rule I'm going to say just for this particular situation normally using lethal force um, generates threat for me however against Borg it might be completely justified so if you use lethal force I will not take threat for it not kind of you you know I, well the technically GM there giveth, are... the gym taketh away yeah. okay so we are going to and this is the first time we have seen the specter on stream so I'm actually going to show it to people because it is fun and so this is the Sp uh, Spectre class vessel um, miniature I well okay a large fighter shuttle it can seat three total and it in my canon was designed to fight the Dominion as the war had um, as the war was winding down, its service wasn't needed, so the few prototypes were locked away and found its way into Section 31 for a while, and now, with Section 31 gone, Starfleet Intelligence has a few of them. Alright, so it only seats three. It does seat three. Well, we're going to need more people on this away mission other than three, so... Yeah, you, you did mention beaming down people, so you could always take transport enhancers. That's obvious, and that's in the plans as well. Mm -hmm. The other option, of course, would be clearing a pathway and then have a shuttle follow, which would also be fun. Either one. Yeah, the, st the stealth shuttle is good for this mission as well, but I feel going in with a bit more firepower 
would be prudent. Well, I do feel like that the shuttlecraft should also come along, um, and at least use its trans. It's yeah, at least use its shuttle and its uh, passive camouflage as a relay point. While the U.S. Spectre has the ability to also provide potentially more firepower if necessary. The more transporters we have for an emergency situation, the closest be about more people at once. I mean, it li it's literally the potential of us versus an entire planet, so we'll beam to a size more reasonable force, and if necessary, I need more than one station to communicate with the ship. Okay. So, sounds like we have a plan of attack. Who is going where? Other than Alec, because I know Alec's already on the ship. Like, he's already gone from the meeting room. <laughs> The dust cloud. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am. Well, the captain is definitely uh, going to the planet, so that's happening. So, whether <laughs> that insertion is happening through the shuttlecraft or through the Spectre, either way, um, I'm going down to the planet. Of course, Helsing is as well. Uh, Commander Bashir, I still want on board the ship, but Justin, and he needs to be able to coordinate and finish Plan B if necessary. Absolutely, make, Captain. I want to make sure we have a reasonable deployment of that. We also need to make sure we uh, take our engineer with us. Uh, has, you know, has, has some engineers and some additional science officers. And we also need to make sure to take care of this doctor, just in case we get into a firefight, or we find other potential survivors down there that we didn't expect. Okay, so I overheard four characters so far. Um, uh, five overall. Five, oh, right? I'm sorry, did I miss someone? I got Singral, Knorr. Oh, I missed Basically, Elsa. everyone, everybody's up a sheer. Yeah. And <laughs> how many security personnel could we bring? Um, you have a support kit. Uh, you have a support um, capacity of five with the ship, so you could technically bring five. I whipped up a support character or a security officer supporting character, which for the time being, you can just take multiples of. Right. Yeah, we'll make we'll make more later. Yeah, yeah. But for now, we'll uh, go with we'll copy these generic ones more than one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got those, and those, and those, and those. Okay, so um, of those, who's going to be flying in the Spectre other than Alak? Oh, come on, dude! None of you trust me. Okay, apparently <laughs> Alec and two of the security uh, personnel are going to be on the Spectre. Oh man, you this your job. I need the security people on the ground. Farewell, <laughs> cruel world. Oh, we have more coming with us. But oh. no, Alec's job is, you know, potentially uh, punch a hole if necessary. But in that case, I still, the, the shuttlecraft is still going for it. I mean, it does have passive camouflage. It does. Um, one thing... One thing we could do, sir, is have our ops officer, who was that, oh. um, Valtorani, mm -hmm. she could go on the Spectre and work the um, the electronic warfare systems patching through. That's a great idea. With her sensor ops. Yeah, that is a fantastic idea. Let's go do that. Okay. <laughs> so, Valtorani will take up one of the spots. Gotcha. And then one, one extra security guy, not part of the five, going to the ground. Right out. Okay. Okay, so we got those guys there. We have the security officers here. Okay, let's. This is going to get real cluttered real quick. So let's move these guys to the GM layer for the moment. Okay, so first down is the Spectre. Is that my understanding? No, the first down is going to be the uh, Shuttlecraft. The Shuttle. shuttle hit. Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, so I hid the wrong group of tokens. Cool. Uh, let's actually go to the city. So you guys are here. You guys are here. Okay, so the stealth shuttle. So the... Borg City is creepy, to say the least. I'll just minimize tokens for the moment. There. Okay. 
uh, the atmosphere of the Borg planet is quite um, toxic for long durations of unassisted breathing. However, for a short-term insertion, um, the medic, the doctor doesn't believe there will be any problems. Just, you know, don't stay longer than 24 hours. All right, then. Um, what could happen? I don't have a secondary. Who wants to take the helm on the on the ship? Who else on the there? shuttlecraft? Yeah, on the shuttlecraft, yes. Well, shuttlecraft will be just dropping off, so... Okay. Uh, okay, so the shuttlecraft... Well, well our, ops op- our ops officer is on board, the shuttlecraft, right? So what's her piloting skill at? Um, Ronnie's on the Spectre. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Spectre. What, what skill is uh, piloting? Pilot would be con. Oh, don't look at me. Oh, <laughs> uh, <let's> <laughs> I have a con of one, so... The, the answer to this question is we need more supporting <laughs> we need more supporting That's the apparently. Uh, <laughs> I like everyone just gets in the ship. Does anyone know how to fly this? Uh, uh, computer, our, fly the shuttle. Craft. Our pilot took the other ship. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so we're just I, going to... I can get you there fast. I can't, I can't get you. I can get you there safe. <laughs> uh, so the shuttlecraft, as it breaches the atmosphere, in... Within about uh, 500 meters of the veniculum structure, which, for sake of argument, is the tall building on the uh, right side of the screen. Yes, precisely. Seems. Like, oh, now my pings work. Interesting. Um, within about 500 meters, uh, the pilot informs you, uh, sir, we are receiving multiple weapons lock. I mean, oh, that's the passive camouflage engaged. Uh, pa- ah, the shuttlecraft's uh, passive camouflage only works when the shuttlecraft is not moving. Oh, well. Oh, what? That seems like an oversight. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit of a thing. Um, I may, I may have, I sh- probably should have clarified that before we engaged on this. But I this is a far more interesting. Talents. This is a gun. Yeah. Probably read talents. Yes. <laughs> that's. A... Oh yeah, okay. well, not in motion. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew reading was important? Yeah, you know. Um, Alex's so... dream of becoming captain is coming true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, I knew we should have volunteered to be on the Spectre. As everyone the, gets um, nuked from orbit. The pilot pulls a few desperate evasion attempts and immediately pulls you out of a safe distance. However, you have successfully marked the locations of the turrets. So should a more heavily armed wet vessel decide to intervene... You know. Well, that was my planetary scans before we came down here. <laughs> yeah, disruption field. Life forms on the planet. Yeah. Disruption fields are bugger, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Call an inspector. All right. Okay. All right. Well, you know we've been detected. So at that point, regardless of what's happening, it's happening. Okay, so, Alex, time to shine. Uh, I receive the signal and turn on engines, power up the phasers on uh, modulating frequencies, and dive for the turrets that, that had the weapons lock. Okay, now, because I'm not... I risk, you know, all sorts of bad things happening if I play MP3s, you know, anyone who chooses to listen to the stream or the uh, VOD afterwards... Feel free to turn on Danger Zone right now. <laughs> um, okay, so there is a grand total of six weapons towers uh, surrounding the uh, veniculum structure. Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, I'd like a daring plus con check with a difficulty of two to avoid incoming fire. Daring plus And the con. ship can, of course, assist with uh, engines plus... Um, engines plus con. Roger. I'd like to quickly point out what um, the Spectre is actually attacking these turrets. I, after our pilot has wonderfully been able to uh, get us out of harm's way, 
I am going to explicitly order this time that we uh, stop moving so we can use the passive camouflage <laughs> system. And since we've already engaged, it's probably the best time for a beam down and insert. Okay. While this commotion is going on. Okay, so... Um, so the first set of attacks don't go so well, Erkin. You will m- miss the... Ah, uh, you uh, miss time a couple of torpedo bursts that damage your ship. And at this point, I get to roll some damage. It's okay, still getting used to her. Ooh, that is a grand total of three points of damage uh, from a... So we are, we are fortunate that the weapons technology on this planet isn't what it was when the Borg were inhabiting it proper. Uh, that is three points of damage to you. Um, you, are, I believe, are a scale two vessel. Yes, so that is two points negated. So you would take one point of shield damage. I hear that in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do I put damage here? Uh, there should be shields. There sure are. Yep. So that is where you would decrease the number. All right. So a little cooked, but I'm okay. Okay, um, let's try that again, shall we? Uh, yes, please. Now, if you wish to fire back at a turret, mm-hmm. that would be a uh, weapons test of uh, control plus security. Okay. Or if you wish to continue dodging, that would be daring plus con. Oh no, we're we're firing back. I figured as much. And what weapon are you wishing to use? Uh, I will use. Now, I'll do a, I'll, I'll just do a phaser cannon. Okay. What does the versatile stat so, mean? Uh, versatile. Um, allow me here. Let me quickly pull up the combat momentum spend uh, Ooh, chart geez. again because that might be handy here. <clears throat> let me pull up the book while we're at it. Yes. So. Copy that. Back to here. So basically, what versatile is is you get. Um, bonus uh, you get two momentum to spend with any of the options available on the chart here as soon as I move the chart to the right layer there we go Um, I'm hoping that's legible doesn't look like it yet there Uh, we go that's good So okay, get, so I get two. Yep, you get okay. two momentum to spend in any way you wish here. Oh, okay. Uh, Don't before forget after the momentum. Yep, yeah, yeah. You also have your other momentum, so you've got a lot of it. Uh, I will spend one momentum because I feel this is pretty critical. Okay. Uh, what are you going to get? An extra die on it? Yes, please. Cool. Okay, so daring, or sorry, control plus security. Three D twenty. Yeah. And the ship can assist with weapons plus security. Okay, that is a success. Um, so, and um, that was a difficulty too. So you get one momentum out of that. So you're back to six. And you can spend the other two momentum however you wish on the chart. Here. All right. Um, let's see. Oops, wrong let's button. Collapse that. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Uh, how does the um, how does the turret is the turret toast or um, that would so how much damage, damage do you roll with your uh, phaser? It should be the little, the little number by the Starfleet icon. Yeah, Oops, uh, right. six. Okay. Six. Yeah. So if you could pull up the challenge dice macro and roll six challenge dice, please. Challenge dice macro. Hmm. Um, you may have to go to the little gear icon on the. Roll 20s, or no, the second from the right icon. And then there should be a macro there called challenge dice. Sure is. Yeah, you can check the box, just put it in bar. Oh, okay. And six challenge dice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, common use of one momentum at least is to always, will allow you to reroll the zeros. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. So you can now roll three challenge dice. 
Oh, that's four. That's that would be enough to destroy one of the turrets. So one of the right. four, one of the torpe one of the uh, ah, disruptor cannon banks blows up, and Sweet. we are going to cut real quick as the insertion team uh, is placed is placed on an ex the ex ah the exterior entrance way to the uh, viniculum chamber. Surprisingly, there's no Borg out here to meet you. Perhaps things are mobilizing, or maybe there's other things at play. Now, um, I should also remind you at when you're capped at momentum like this, you can always spend two momentum to create an advantage. And that advantage could be pretty much anything within reason. That will help you... That will make your task easier. You also have determination that could auto... Or give you two automatic successes. So... <clears throat> Okay, so uh, you guys find yourselves all on board the ah, wrong bloody layer. Okay, so you guys find yourselves on the uh, uh, platform to the viniculum. There's a la uh, large double doors that are currently sealed. Um, Oh, time for me to jump in. If All right, like. well, yeah. <laughs> okay, I just didn't know if the description was if there was still more to the description. No, that's pretty much it. There's a large, heavy set double doors and ominous blinking green lights all over the place. Well, I'm gonna quickly remind the assertion team before we fi find a way through this door. I want to keep in mind that during this insertion, and given what we could kind of gleam from the the age of this board, it's likely that they are of the of the variant that if we don't necessarily pose or pose any threat that they may necessarily allow us to skirt on by but at the same time no one can necessarily be sure especially with this ai involved so keep on your tire keep on your toes but let's find a way through the store they will ignore but, us unless they see us as a threat and at that moment the specter blows up one of the uh disruptor cannons <laughs> Do you well, think I mean, it's uh, a specter is a threat, not us? True. <laughs> Do you think we're worthwhile to spend two minutes on the create advantage or something like, um, like a flashy firefight in the sky or something? And then is that is that how that would work? Use something like that to that could work. Yeah. Um, there's not really any um, aside from the specter. There's not a lot of air traffic actually. Um, a, a good example for. An advantage in this instance could be that the uh, that the um, existing uh, the good artificial intelligence, the one that's been on planet for a while, sees this as a good opportunity to aid you and say breach open the door or interfere with board communications. So something like that. Maybe use it to block communications. I think we can get to the door. Probably the communications part is probably the trickier part. You can shield us from the board if it has the potential to uh, so do so. That was a bit quiet, yes? No, I'm saying my idea for an advantage is that actually being able to shield um, from the internal sensors of the molecule of the structure. Oh. Okay. Well, also, so, you know, just to make sure if there's any other, um, you know, additional sensors or other weapons platforms or stations that will possibly may be in here. Um, not only will this does it have the ability to assist us getting through them, but also, you know, keep us in the dark, so to speak. Okay, so that sounds like a good advantage, so you can spend the two momentum for that. Any objections? Alright, then it's happening. That's happened. Sounds good. Okay, so, um, these guys managed to breach in, um, uh, Alak, if you care to do another dodge and re and uh, response, so okay, that would be a uh, daring plus con. Daring plus con. Dice. Focus. Okay, and the ship can assist, so that's ship assist. a difficulty of two, of course. Someone has the specter. I've got it. 
the ship is on a different page setting. There it is. Somebody else have it? Yeah, I got it open. What is it? Um... Uh, engines plus con. Engines plus con. Yep, and it always has the focus. Ooh, okay. Ugh. I gotta get me a different ship. You might have to. <laughs> so, challenge dice. One. Another three. Ooh, okay, that is another three, so that's another point to... Point of shields. Yep. Oh, we got lots of shields. How many shields do you have? Good news, you wanted another ship. Uh, well, all nine dots were filled in. Hmm. So I don't know if there's all side, But then again, shields. I could be wrong. Okay, cool. No, I'm not one to... Oh, yeah, because it's uh, structure, I believe. Yeah, so that makes sense. So I should roll more challenge oh, well. dice in the future. I can do that. <laughs> well, uh, the structure is only seven, so I guess there's oh, seven yeah. dots. Oh, uh, yeah. Seven, seven from structure, two, plus two from scale. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, so you take another point of shield damage, and you can now do a control plus I, security. I, I bring her around and open the phaser banks on right. the turret that shot me. Mm hmm. Flying you. And the ship would be uh, weapon security. Correct. Now, um, I should mention the added bonus of the torpedoes. Mm -hmm. um, I believe they have the high yield property, which means that they damage everything within a... In ship-to-ship -ship combat, they damage multiple targets with one explosion. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, you could potentially use them to take out more than one turret, but firing them does give me a point of threat. Um, I'm not going to, just because the... the my captain and crew are inside. Ah. So this is more surgical rather than if something goes terribly wrong that I don't accidentally blow up the building. Understandable. Okay, so feel free to roll your uh, security uh, or your uh, yeah. control security. Difficult. I will too. use. I will use a momentum on this. Okay. We appreciate your discretion. <clears throat> uh, <sighs> oh boy. So, you know, you could always spend another momentum to cancel those out. But you said you could fly this thing. It's my first time. Yeah, I mean, you got more how you need more how to... <laughs> Sure do. I will spend the momentum to to cancel those. Okay. Okay. Ha -ha. Uh, so and that was me... one momentum each, right? Oh yeah, it's one each. So. Oh, that would be three momentum. I'll just cancel one. With okay. One momentum. So, um, roll me your challenge. Roll me the six challenge dice. Yeah. Please. And also, well, I should also note that you have two floating momentum. So, yeah, exactly. I don't so know. I, if, can... I don't know if the rules say it, but I will say that you could use the momentum, <laughs> one of the momentum there, to uh, cancel out. I presume eight is pretty good. Uh, yeah. So, do you see that turret? Because you don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do you manage to destroy the turret, you manage to somehow carve your initials into the building. Now we're getting it. Um, <laughs> don't don't okay. encourage him. Don't encourage him. How many turrets do we... There were are, five. Are now active. there are three. All right, cool. Okay. The, so... uh, does an attack count as a task? Um, if we the... were in actual ship combat... Well, yeah, an, an attack does count as a task. Then I can use my two, my two floating momentum to use the swift task. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. In this okay. instance, right. the floating momentum can only be applied to the uh, Starship Combat momentum spends. Yeah, there's one called Swift yeah. Task. Oh, there is a Swift Task. Hey, what do you know? Okay, cool. Go for it then. That, All right. It would help if I read that. <laughs> okay. All right, bring it around. So this is now going to be a difficulty of three for uh, yeah. another weapons attack. The chance of failure is fairly high, but it's free, so I might as well do it. Mm -hmm. well, no help from the ship. And, <clears throat> okay, you get one more point of momentum. <clears throat> and an additional two floating if you wish. But So, yeah. Uh, roll me your challenge dice. Alright. Six challenge dice. 
Okay, now they're down to two turrets. <clears throat> well, I think this is okay. Okay, we are going to cut inside. <laughs> uh, who else is in the shuttle? Uh, or it's, with me? it's you, a vault, and a random security guy. Uh, I will high five the random security guy, and then go for a, a, a an up high on on uh, the other one. Yeah, it was uh, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Ronnie seems like she'd be down for a high five. Oh yeah, she's a uh, right. she comes from a, a mining culture, so she's always up for some, uh, you know, high fiving. All right. Um, one quick question on the ground crew. Mm -hmm. Um, we were looking at five security. Yeah, we are. Additional security guys. Well, okay. Cool. Three now because two of the support slots are in the Spectre. Okay, I saw you did. No problem. That's all right. So we are going to be in here. Oh, Borg tiles. Borg tiles. Thank you. Continuing mission. You guys are all here. this instance. I do need to change character size at some point. Okay. Inside is the Viniculum Chamber is a very hot and sweaty place. N made even uh, more... made doubly so by the fact that you're wearing body armor and carrying some rather heavy-duty phaser rifles. We center that for stream. Here we go. <clears throat> Uh, yes, there are three more security guys. Thank you. I feel better now. You're welcome, Chief of Security. Feel safer already. Okay, and um, so it is. Uh, the green tiles are. Um, you have entered over a long series of catwalks. Uh, you do not want to fall down those... You do not want to fall off the catwalks, let's say. Um, you can see a, an internal structure uh, indicated by the purple tiles. As a, uh, There's only a couple points of entry from here. The first is directly to the north. Well, actually, they're technically both to the north. One is just far more norther. But you don't... Uh, you're currently not picking up any... Well, the Borg are not actively paying any attention to you. Well, I'm going to ask the AI that we have here what exactly the best way of entry, um, considering our situation. Uh, the AI uh, box chirps and chitters. Um, must... Uh, will tell you to... It must access a data terminal within the inner structure. Um, the closest point of entry is fine as long as the um, as long as it doesn't know you're here. And on that note, um, the sound of two explosions outside the uh, um, facility sort of rumble the building, to which point the AI says, "That is a very suitable distraction." In which I will gladly take. Oh, let's beeline it. No reason to delay. Okay. Uh, you guys... Sorry, GM, what is this? Those are recharging alcoves. Most of them are empty. Okay. There gotcha. are a few that are full, and I shall make a couple of them apparent as you walk past them. They are currently inactive, doing that creepy Borg standing still kind of thing. Okay. So, um, so who is... Um, I think this is literally the first time I've ever heard this or said it in uh, Star Trek role-playing, but is there a marching order? Um... Well, 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 my security officer is going to take point. And Shortest lead, up. sir? Shortest direction? Yes. Okay. Obviously, keep your tricorders out to determine exactly where the Borg are so we can avoid them if necessary. 
actively scan. Just make y'all fit. But yeah, now Chief is carrying front. I'll be right behind him and everybody else tag along. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> also, um. Eh. Nah, never mind. Let's continue. Okay. The procession proceeds at a. I'm assuming a quick but. Uh, a cautious pace, I should say. Moving, moving as quickly as possible while avoiding as much conflict as possible. Am I Roger. correct in that? Yeah, I figured that. Okay, so... Uh, once you enter... I'm just going to take the initiative and move your guys... I'm assuming a formation similar to that. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's yep. fine. Okay. Um, as soon as you cross into the inner structure, uh, the attitude of the Borg change. Uh, these two here. And let me rechange for stream. There we go. So these two Borg up here are uh, both simultaneously activate and step onto the platform. Um, they raise their they raise their arms, and you see that they have a little graspy claw on one of their one of their uh, arms, and the other one is the standard traditional uh, five fingered hand. And they begin to exorably, but certainly, move their way towards you. Well, keep calm, everyone. Still gonna operate on that logic that we don't present an extraordinary threat. Okay. I mean, well, I don't want to fire first, but if necessary, and they close the distance, then we'll, we will we will fire shots. Okay. But for now, they, let's get in. If they come closer than two, less than three squares. Yeah, yeah, especially. Are the GM are they uh is there enough room around this catwalk? Are if they are straight up blocking our way or will we have the ability to walk in between them? Um there Um I'm going to say that you can walk two abreast over the catwalk in the catwalks if necessary. And I'm the, this but this um the purple structure is um an internal structure. So it's no longer over large caverns. It's more of an oppressive walls and Borg circuitry. I see. Yeah. So not a heck of a lot of uh, movement area. And with that, the Borg continued to move. So are we going to try squeeze past them, hoping they don't react, or...? Well, as a lot, I want to make sure that nobody goes gets uh, some quick tubules in their fucking in their neck. So keep out of range of uh, being assimilated. But we're gonna we're gonna try to walk past these guys. All right. So advance. Advance. <laughs> okay. Just as a game of chicken. Do their yes. arms raise at all? Oh yes, their arms are raised, and they are going to come within striking distance of the security officer, and they are going to make an attack. They don't seem to have any energy weapons, but they will do the following. It's not often I have to roll this sheet. Ten plus. Now this could be an opposed check. So if the sec someone could control the security officer, um, <clears throat> uh, the security officer, and roll me a daring plus security test. I'm gonna take that. Okay. 
220, and uh, focus. Well, he needs to meet or beat zero. Well, no, he needs to beat zero. Otherwise, the attacker wins. And he does. There we go. So the security officer is able to fend off a rather clumsy strike from the Borg and is immediately allowed to make a counterattack with a melee weapon. Well, there are no weapons on this guy's sheet, so... Uh, yeah, I forgot to put those in. Um, unarmed Strike, I believe, is one challenge dice. Or you can add a phaser, which I believe... Actually, Type 3 phaser, I think, deals 3 plus security? Oh, equipment's always... It's one or five challenge dice, Unarmed Strike. Is. Well, it'd be security plus something. I think security plus one for unarmed. Yeah, security plus one. Okay, that's right. So security plus one challenge dice. Uh, I think so it's I think, five challenge yep, dice, right? Be five. Type of attack, melee. Ah, and so the phaser rifle deals four plus security. So, grand total of nine. Holy moly. Well, this is a melee attack anyway. That so. is true, yeah. So, 2d20. Wow. 2d20. Um, okay. So, the Borg can attempt to parlay. Or par. Uh, daring plus security. Did you see the Borg try to parlay? Or Yes, that's yeah, what he said. I said that. I didn't... I forget. Oh, wow. He meets, but you have to beat in order. As the defender, you have to beat the attacker. So you can click on the roll damage. And if you'd like, you could spend a momentum to re-roll those zeros. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, because you would have got a momentum. Uh... Mm -hmm. No, you didn't. Tied. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, you tied. All right, so I gotta go roll Dan security once again. Oh no, no, just roll three challenge dice. Oh, yeah. Oh, three challenge dice. My bad. Yeah. Okay, so that is a nice. grand total of five. The Borg has a resistance of one because you know it's part machine, so that is not enough to cause it an injury. So it is still up. Can we throw another? Momentum at it to give him five that would give him the uh, what is it? Uh, Not shock, it's something. Yeah, it causes an injury. That's right, so that's an option, Captain. Uh, I mean, sure, I mean, I don't mind. Let's go get some rolls going. Okay, go spend this momentum. Okay, so so. the momentum at it. Uh, whoever's controlling the security uh, may describe how he or she has yet to be determined is causing the injury. Well, obviously, they're going to clasp their hands above their head and deliver a furious knockdown. All right. So the Borg is has been uh, completely disoriented and just sort of does and performs and responds to it by acting like a mannequin that has fallen over in a clothing shop and sort of leans against the wall at an awkward angle while it tries to re uh, reposition itself. Making that weird clicking sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in this case, I'm done playing around hand-to-hand -hand combat and let's say phases out. Let's get ready. Okay, so we're going to go into initiative order. Hooray. Okay, so. Now, so, I have these ones adding a turn. Oh, I always forget how to do this part. If I click add turn, then I can add turns for everyone else. Okay. We are now in combat, so this Borg has already taken its, its action. And now we go one at a time. So, oh, uh, nope, that security officer hasn't gone yet this Borg has. Enter. 
Okay, cool. Uh, so players get to go um, however they wish. Um, I'll go ahead and take, if you don't mind, Captain, take the first shot to take the board. The other board it. down in front of us with the rifle. Yeah, go for it. I'll follow up right behind you. So, control security? Uh, yep, yeah, control security. Difficulty of two, I believe. probably have focuses. Nope. Have I lost people? Nope, I'm here. I screwed something up. Oh, here. Oh. I had to restart it. Ah, okay. That's fine. There we go. Okay, so that gets you a momentum. And it also allows you to shoot a Borg in the face or the chest, wherever you like. Ah, uh, so... Uh, if you're using phaser rifles, that is four plus your security, which I suspect is high. So roll Roger, that. I'm up to a nine. Yeah, so roll me that many challenge dice. We're running with type C phasers, right? So uh, that's what Roger. you ordered. Mm -hmm. That's a significant amount. And that on its own is enough to cause an injury. Uh, actually, he's uh, already injured, so that... Uh, are you shooting at the one that's already... Oh, that was the, the second one. Ah, the one behind. Okay. Definitely. Right, because the first one was... In, yeah. Now, for game mechanics, once a, a bad guy's injured, they're they're out of the combat, or I do they have a chance to come back? I attempting to double-check that myself. Um, I know for a player, you can proceed as an in, on an injured... Uh, let's see, to avoid injury, page 176. I forgot to say it before, but I would do, what is that action for phasers that you can do to prepare to take advantage of effect to do like the spread? Oh, that's aiming, I think. I forgot to copy the momentum spend yeah, task here. I forgot about that. Is that one? So I do like the first part of my action to do that. Then the second part is to shoot to make take advantage of the effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking in the rule book too. Yeah. All right. So let's just. Um, injury is not here. Where is it? Rule book is, you know, for all the rules it has, some of them are just in weird places. Yep. Um, ah. For the moment, I'm just in, or, in order to keep things going because we're already moving on a little later than I had anticipated. Uh, let's just say that that's enough to drop the Borg. Uh, we can find the rules. All right. So there are still several Borg on the field now that the shots are fired. There are several Borg um, to your flank that are waking up as well as you hear the sound coming from the viniculum area of a couple heavy treads coming out your way. Now, at this stage, um, because they are inside and you are still outside there, Alec, um, mm -hmm. you have the potential to make their lives either easier or better by a couple precise strikes. That was my plan. Mm. <clears throat> okay, uh, so... Um, <laughs> Whoever wants to go next on the um, away team can do a combat action if they wish, as well as um, Alec. Let me know what you'd like to do. Um, I'd like to get the. Oh crap! I keep forgetting your name. Uh, uh Rani. Rani. Yeah. I should probably. Uh, get... Yeah, well done. Ah, uh, well, we're not on that sheet mm. at the moment, so I don't have a token. Um, to pull up a map, uh, of our position and the the away team's position okay. and the vaniculum and see what the th if I can just blast a hole through the building and into it. Ah. So you are pretty much pretty in luck. Sizable distraction. Um, the vaniculum is located 
pretty much near the top, uh, the penthouse suite, so to speak. Hmm. Um, so it would be fairly easy to blow a hole, uh, whether it's a useful hole or not. Well, if all fails, you might be able to eliminate a few of those uh, Zellborg from outside. Uh, it's never going to hurt. Uh, what about disrupting the power? And... Ooh, that's a plan. Yes. Um, roll me uh, sensors plus engineering. Or roll me insight plus engineering. And either Rani can assist, because she's got focuses for this, or the shuttle can assist. Either or. Uh, I'd actually like her to take the lead on it as I'm busy dodging lasers. Okay. Um, can someone pull up Vault Rani's character <laughs> sheet, please? Uh, that would be a insight plus engineering. Um, okay. And I believe that this actually would count as an activation for her because I think we used her in pre at the first game. So whoever, pick whoever picks her up can enhance her as they wish. And this will be a difficulty one. It would have been difficulty two, but you now have uh, friendly people inside giving you a better look at things. Uh, I can probably do it for it. Sorry, what did you say she was? Insight uh, plus... Insight plus engineering. That was engineering. This is two dice? Uh, two dice, unless you wish to take a momentum for the third. Uh, uh, well, it's one difficulty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that should be okay. Yeah. Uh, the... Uh, Alec, your uh, targeting screen immediately in... Uh, indicates a place where a couple torpedoes or f precise phaser strikes could do a significant no amount of damage to the uh, cohesiveness of this collective. Well, that sounds like a delightful plan to test out the torpedo launchers of the Spectre. Excellent. I get threat. Cool. Or sorry, the photon missiles. Yes, photon missiles. <laughs> because who needs torpedoes when you have things that can lock onto targets? Uh, so... Um, uh, so similar role, except in this instance the difficulty is three. Anyone mind if I spend the last momentum? Go for it. All right. Uh, control versus. Oh, sorry, control. No, sorry, security. Yeah. Con. Right? Yeah. Um, security. Ah, nope, it would be daring, or sorry, control plus security. Okay, control security. Yeah, thank you. Daring three, and the ship can assist with weapon security. All right, three rolls and a focus. Oh, goody. Uh-oh. Oh. No. You have no momentum left either. Um, <laughs> this is... Well, hang on, the ship can assist? The ship can try, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ship... Uh, uh. You said you wanted a new ship, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe a new character while I'm at it. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, so. Farewell, cruel world. That's going to be fun. Okay, so uh, let's cut back to the inside. <laughs> uh, Captain, I believe you said you were going to take the next... Or, sorry. The Borg has you... been taken... The Borg has also suffered an injury, so there are none that can oppose you right now. So this Borg here, and turn. Just throw it out there, but I think I have a pretty nasty melee attack. Good to know. So we have. I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not kidding either. Is okay. it your ice pick? Yes, my ice pick. Nice. <laughs> okay, so this Borg is going to approach down here, and that is pretty much all he can do. Um. So that is which Borg. Okay, let's actually sort things here. Wrong way. Also wrong way. What? There we go. Okay, uh, who wants to go from the Federation side? Uh, I can attack the guy that's our back. Our back. Okay. So that's this guy down here. Oh, allow yeah. me to refocus for stream. All right. Uh, can I actually squeeze in there? These are the recharger pods, right? So can yeah. I actually get? You can, yes. Uh, the you can squeeze a breast here. Okay, so I'll just be over there, I guess. Um, so I'll I'll attack him with my uh, 
Ushan Tor, the ice, the Andorian ice pick. Okay. Um, would you count that as a blade or as like a knife slash dagger? Um, I would actually call that a blade. Okay. So it's challenge dice, right? Uh, so and first then... you roll the attack. Uh, oh, roll the attack. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so daring plus security. Yep. And uh... this Borg will get to roll to try to avoid it. They've not been rolling. Daring plus well. security. Two dice. And I have a focus on melee combat. Yep, that works. Um, oh, Alec, you'll need to... Don't forget to spend that last momentum. Ooh, you got three. Oh, yeah, sorry. So let's see what the... Borg does. Daring plus security. <coughs> it does not. So uh, you can... Nice. Always... So whatever your... So there's the number and by the blade, so roll that plus roll number of challenge dice equal to the blade damage plus your security. Blade plus uh where's the blade? I was just looking at it. Um I think blade is two. That sounds about right. Two uh, I think it's two vicious one. Ooh, it's yeah vicious that's what I'm showing. Yeah, nice. okay. So then I have security four, so six dice. Uh yeah, that sounds right. Alright, so six challenge dice. Okay, that's pretty good. And because it's vicious one, so for each effect that's rolled, you get an additional part of damage. So that's seven. Yep. So that yep. pretty much will damage this Borg uh, quite heavily, I might say. Um, however, I'm going to spend threat to keep it up. So it's it's injured, but it manages to bypass whatever circ whatever damage circuitry you caused it, and it will continue to function in combat. Okay. Okay, so it's at this point that um, Alex uh, photon missiles hit and I'm going to need the captain and Mr. Helsing to, whoa, that's I clicked wrong, to please roll me a daring plus, or no, a fitness plus security test um, difficulty of one. And anything that could be used for a focus? Uh, let's see. Athletic, athletics, acrobatics, um, gymnastics. Martial artist? Yeah, mar I'll allow martial artist. Hmm. Will you allow undercover operations? Not really, no. All right, then, then I have no focuses that apply. <laughs> okay. I pull a hammy. Yeah. Okay. So, well, you both survive. Uh, you both do okay as the missiles uh, go off target and slam into the, your side of the building, causing you to, causing everyone to, uh, uh, sort of fall to the left. Uh, the reason I had you two roll because you are right over top of nothing. Thankfully, you both recover well enough. Although uh, Liam, you are. Uh, you're going to suffer an injury. It's not a bad injury, but one that you can uh, carry through. So you basically pull a muscle. Uh, the doctor gotcha. can doctor can he take uh, her action to heal you if she'd like. Medic. What are the limitations? Uh, limitations are you will lose one point in fitness for the for the time being. I'll just okay. call it pull I, leg. I can suck it up. All right. Okay. And I am concerned. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Knorr, are you still around? Uh, yeah, but after I take this action, I gotta go. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we are out of Borg actions for the moment. So, um, the Lieutenant Commander Helsing has just pulled his leg badly. I think... Um, if she's free, I'll take the I'll take the heel. Yeah, I don't think her doing any combat would do any good. Um, unless... If, if they weren't Borg, she could do a Vulcan neck pinch, but other than... Um, so, what is it? Control medicine? Um, under combat situations, it would be daring medicine, with a difficulty right. of one. Okay.
What? Oh, okay. That is... Oh, hope you didn't I made, that leg. I made it work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Good something about the whole away. situation has... Um, Time to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so congratulations. You are... You're going to now take one point of... De- just for the time being, you lose one point of security. While well, you've... You're more than well capable uh, of continuing on, but you're not in the best of shape at the moment. I try not to murder her while I'm gone. Duly noted. All right. Good okay. night. Good night. Okay. Go ahead and move her up next to just behind where I'm at. That's right. Yeah. So you are injured. Let's mark. Um, this looks like a good. There we go. Injured. Okay. Um, next up is the damaged Borg, who is injured. And for the sake of ease of combat, I'm just going to move things along a little bit, just because I want to finish the story up before it hits my bedtime, and my bedtime trumps all yours. So, <laughs> um, so let's just, um, if everyone... Let's just say everyone opens fire with their phaser rifles. So those who have not yet taken a turn, uh, make a daring and sec- or control security for a phaser rifle attack. Was this a roll that you made me do because of the proton the missiles? My yes. Counting as my turn. <laughs> um, no, that was a reaction. So. Oh, that was a reaction. All right. Yeah. What am I rolling here? Uh, control security. Okay, remember when I said the dice were rolling hot? Well, now they're not. Okay. So there's that. So there's a grand total of one. I got the second security officer coming up. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. And I believe that's everyone. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, I was basically just rolling to see if you guys got any momentum or complications. So you guys get a, a total of one extra momentum and a, another complication on Liam, who I think I've punished enough, so I'll just take threat from that. Oh, that was uh, the security officer. Oh, that was the security officer. Oh, right. Because yes. uh, I see Lieutenant Commander Liam Helsing and then security officer. Oh, Roger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know what? I'll say that this secure this guy's rifle suffers a jam. It does its attack and then becomes as useful as a club. All right, and that was this guy right there. Oh, well, that was that guy. Okay. So he'll need to spend some time to fix his rifle. Roger, I'll put a little mark on him. Mm-hmm. I just did, actually. Okay, right not a problem. Okay, so... Um, enough concentrated fire manages to destroy the three uh, Zelborg that are an immediate threat. Uh, you do notice that they're moving fairly slowly, so it's not difficult to make a running sprint, with the exception of Liam, who is sort of now hobbling. But he's still making much better time than some of the people to the Viniculum. You know, um... If we had more time, I'd run more combat, but quite frankly, let's not. Actually, uh, just as you're about to enter the viniculum, um, Alec, um, can you please roll me another uh, missile attack, please? Okay. Eat missiles. Uh, So that would be... Yeah, control security. Yeah, control security, difficulty of three. No complications, please, Arena. (laughs) Oh, fine. I'm spending the momentum. All right. Uh, and I will also. Oh, that's, never mind. That's con. Yeah. Sorry, I bold con, but not bold security. Right. Yeah. So. Well. Eat it. Eat it. Uh, and the specter shell so assist, there, obviously. There are so far two more momentum. And who's rolling the specter? I got it. Okay. And there's another two. Continue to eat it. So Alec has, you know, found his groove. Um, 
As you are about to enter the viniculum, you see two Borg drones uh, rear up and ready to char attack you with a ranged weaponry, just in time for a massive explosion to knock both off their feet. Uh, the, let's reset. Move everyone into view. Captain, this is Lieutenant Alec. The perimeter has been secured. Well, that is some very good news. Thank you, Lieutenant. Let's get to work. Sorry about the last missiles. Uh, there was a B. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll write you up later. Wait, was it a Borg B? Well, of course. Oh. All right. So, um, you now have five momentum again. It's amazing. Isn't it interesting how quickly it comes and goes during combat? But, yes. No. Would oh. that one security officer have his weapon unjammed? By, by this point, yes. He managed to get it loose by um, using it to club a Borg. I like that. Yeah, that's fitting. Assimilate this. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so you have the artificial intelligence module and several uh, data jacks through it. Um, this will be a control engineering task with a difficulty of one to um, figure out how to get it into the viniculum itself. Sorry, what was the rule you said? Uh, control engineering. Difficulty one. Ooh, okay. Uh, uh, I can... uh, anything from like power systems or... Oh, I do have power systems as a focus, okay. actually. That will work. Uh, right. Control plus engineering. Should I set the momentum on this just in case? Sure. sure. We don't transfer sure. it to the next sure. session. Yeah. yeah, I might as well, right? Since yeah, we got yeah it. spend it. Well, good thing you spent All that right. momentum. Yep, you yeah. can make it. Okay. All right. Um, you figure out which uh, port connections are required, what sort of commands to enter, and as soon as you connect everything together, the box goes dead in your hands. And for a little while, you're wondering what, if any. You're wondering for a second, did you break something? Then you're like, no, that's impossible. You are the Shran. You have never broken anything in your entire life. Definitely not. Definitely not. And then, one by one, uh, the recovery alcoves sort of spark. Uh, okay. The fr they, they don't sort of spark. They spark. Big time. Uh, one by one in a cascade of failures. Those that are... Can, those that contain Borg drones uh, don't spark until the drones have um, st st ah, the Borg have stepped out of their alcoves then they spark and oh, um, you know that creepy Borg voice that goes, we are the Borg you will be assimilated, that voice that people often hear uh, it's that voice but Instead, it says something along, We are the Zell. This is the artificial intelligence that you have curated to this facility. I regret all that has happened, and strive to do make things right. Well, that's a good start. I appreciate that. So, I suppose it's time for a new introductions again, but first I gotta tend to my people. Well, you tend to yours. Understandable. There is much for me, there is much for this system to accomplish before relations can be established. Please abscond to your sh please, uh, re please return to your vessel and have and have Sibyl, ah, and have Sibyl turn off the disruptor field. Oh, I will, can't do well, though. I will be, let's set up these transport enhancers and leave. <laughs> Roger, the two security guys up in the front 
break off to set them up right about where you are, Captain. Well, I'll lend some of the Spectre's power to increase their efficiency. Of course, let's uh, beam the uh, engine directly to Sick Bay and beam everybody else back to the bridge. All right. It's not the smoothest transport in the world, but you do make it. Uh, so we are going to hop back to the bridge. Back to familiar territory. Uh, let's see. The engineer needs to be here. Yeah. Vault is still on the ship. Okay. Okay, uh, Bashir, you're busy cooling your heels on in the commander's chair when all of a sudden <laughs> the captain and a bunch of security officers, one or two looking slightly sheepish, materialize on the bridge. Captain? Um, put that on a list of things that I don't wish to do it. Oh, can you take me but off? Yeah, I'm trying. I just keep bouncing between the wrong labels. Okay. Or wrong layers. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, oh, did I come through hard? Yeah, you're here. Uh, right, sorry, cool. we, we lost a little bit of you. Oh, uh, well, I just said put that on the list of things that I never want to do again. It worked. Oh, no, really I think. That, that one was as smooth as a snow snake's bottom. Uh, well, in any case, I mean, we did what we had to do, and I'll go contact uh, Samal and tell him to turn off the disruptor beam soon, but after I tend to our people first. Mm -hmm. um, Lieutenant Kinor is puts a firm hand on uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing's uh, shoulder and strongly indicates that he should come down to sick bay at his earliest convenience. Where she shall wound him once again. Nah. Well, hopefully not. If if it was her fault, she doesn't admit it. Will do. And the uh, security officers will take uh, the phase of threes and return back to the armory. Mm -hmm. And you can return the body armor at your convenience, gentlemen. Um, the, the shuttle and the specter... I'm assuming the captain is telling them to return to base before he has beamed out. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Alec, as you are returning to the ship, you get a communications from the um, from the spire. Ooh. Lieutenant Alec. I deeply regret firing upon you. Please accept my apologies. Apologies accepted, strange AI person. Yeah. Uh, no harm, no foul, and you've got me to test out my new ship. I regret that I destroyed your turrets. But did you see that? It was like pew 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 pew. It responds in silence, and eventually the communication just sort of times out. Well, add that to another planet that I'm no longer allowed on. <laughs> Another. Well, that's an interesting story. It, it's why we call him the, uh, the 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 smart Alec. Ooh, nice one. Ooh, wow. I don't well, know if that everybody. was intended or not, but wow. Okay, crew evaluations are in order. <laughs> okay. So, um, any scenes that people would like to do before we call the session? Uh, just one real quick one. Sure. Uh, Captain, you sense that anger that Liam was having before is now there's a um, conflicting emotions going on within him right now. It's pretty obvious right up front, so it's easy to pick up. Well, at that time after, um, I'm definitely finished uh and collating all this information and writing the reports, we'll definitely check in one on later. At a later date. 
All right, we'll put a pin in that to visit that next session then. Or whenever the captain decides. Well, next session's probably preferable. Fair enough. Do our Romulans want to ride anywhere? <laughs> um, the Romulans have indicated that they wish to stay with the uh, planet and um, assist in its recovery. And they fully assure you that they will be living on the planet once the atmosphere has cleared up a little and fully intend to move out, out of the moon facility. Um, they do ask that you notify their uh, next of kin, though, and they pass along some personal information. Okay, good. Well, more information to go forward to the Contiki. All right. Here. Contiki. Um, it's sur not surprisingly, you get a hail from the uh, Director Chalmers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Super Nintendo Chowers, what can I do for you? <laughs> so you're telling me that within 24 hours of being in the Lasai Expanse, you have not only discovered three versions of an AI, one Borg-infected, one primitive version, and one Romulan-enhanced, you've also reverted an entire Borg collective to some sort of state... And there's Romulans involved. Things happen quickly out here in the Lasai Expanse. I am just glad that you were the crew that uh, took care of it. <sighs> well, so am I. Yeah. We're about to spin up our drives and head back to more familiar space, Captain. If you need anything, here are the. Uh, feel free to communicate to us via the Midas array that will be constructed shortly at Deep Space 15. We also have an operative on Deep Space 15. Uh, goes by the code name of Rush. Alright. Well, I'm So there is an actual intelligence, Starfleet intelligence operative on board. So are this, no, it's, it's the station personnel and the commanding personnel aware of this? Not to my knowledge, Captain. That's not really my oper... That's not... He doesn't report directly to me. I just tell the... I'm just telling you the details. Well, I appreciate passing along this information then a lot. In any case, I have some information for you. Um, the Romulans have requested that their next of kin be notified. Also, when you get back to Federation Spit, uh, make sure you actually give them the information. And uh, the crew evaluations that I have started began to prepare earlier in terms of... Uh, the, the crew of the night hot out here in the expanse of course uh, even though um, this might go s some ways to improving our relationships with the Romulans well best of luck yes open agreed captain we'll be in touch somehow we'll figure it out safe travels Chalmers out and just as he just as he does that, uh, a clumsy ensign trips oh, uh, trips in front of the screen, dropping a, a series of pads over him. Just as it goes out, he goes Skinner, Skinner! and then it cuts out <laughs> because I couldn't resist. And so ends episode two of the Nighthawk. Uh, just give me a second here to stop screen or stop the stream. Players, please stick around for a couple minutes and. Everyone watching on the anyone watching the stream? It's been fun. Anyone who is watching the uh, VOD on ELH's channel, uh, we stream on Twitch McCall1337 every alternating Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.